Sports, Sunday night at 11.30. This is Jerry Faust, the 24th head coach at the University of Notre Dame. He was hired on November 24th, 1980, and today will be his final day as head coach. As he stood here at the Orange Bowl watching his team warm up, one wonders whether he reflected back to a speech he gave this senior class their first day. We feel that you're the best student athlete that there can be. And this is why we asked you to come to Notre Dame. I'm going to be tough on you. I'm going to be awful tough on you. I'm going to make you excel, both in the classroom and on the field. We're going to have the best football team we can have, and we're going to have the best student we can have. And on that first afternoon against LSU, the Golden Dome was shining ever so brightly. Faust's team played like a champion. But maybe it was not meant to be, because though there would be those moments in the sun, more often than not, there was frustration. Four straight losses to the Air Force Academy. The inability to win consistently at home. A last-second field goal in Arizona would win in South Bend. Win some, lose too many. No one was ever sure which Notre Dame team would be on the field. And so, this past Monday, Jerry Faust called it quits after five long and often frustrating seasons. And yet there is a final chapter to be played out here at the Orange Bowl. One final game, but it will not be easy. For across the field will be the Miami Hurricanes, and they are explosive. And this final chapter will be played under glorious skies here in South Florida. When the tourists first began pouring into Miami, they came because of weather like this. And in the Orange Bowl this afternoon, there will be some 50,000 on hand to watch Jerry Faust close out his career as the head football coach of the Irish. Now, Jimmy Johnson just a short time ago spoke to the Miami Hurricanes. A game like this, as emotional as it is, be prepared for the sudden change. A break goes against you, just bite your rear end off, just reach down and get something extra. This offset the psychological uplift that they'll have. We get a break, things go our way, just pour it on them. Pour it on them and don't let them up. Play with class, play with poise, do whatever it takes. Let's get everybody, everybody out. And when you're nine and one, whatever it takes is a win today and then an appointment in the Sugar Bowl and the possibility of a national championship for the Hurricanes. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS. Now you can lease a Toyota for less in Kentucky at Howard Adams Toyota in Covington. Drive an 86 for sale for just $95 a month. Drive a tough Toyota two-wheel drive pickup for just $99 a month. Drive the sporty new Celica for just $160 a month. Drive the classic Camry for just $178 a month. Howard Adams will give you cash for your trade-in. You really can buy or lease a Toyota for less in Kentucky at Howard Adams Toyota in Covington, the Tri-State's first Toyota dealer. Music has taken me all over the world, from my hometown in Cleveland to Royal Command performances at the London Palladium. But my heart remembers Ohio. The beauty and excitement, music, theater, arts and laughter, all year long. Ohio, for me, was the start of it all and will forever be the heart of it all. Call 1-800-BUCKEYE for free winter suite and save on your Ohio winter getaway. In the tunnel, Jerry Faust prepared to lead the Irish out for the last time. Clearing the way now for the team as they will come pouring out into the Orange Bowl. has been a busy afternoon in college football. To get us up to date, let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Jim? 
All right, thank you, Brent. Only about 40 degrees cooler here in New York. Uh, but first of all, in the first part of our CBS Sports basketball football doubleheader today, you saw Michigan beat Georgia Tech in the tip-off classic 49 to 44. One other basketball final, the Irish of Notre Dame beat Butler 87 to 56. Now back to football, Miami, the team you'll be seeing today now knows for sure who they will be playing in the Sugar Bowl, Pat. Well, Tennessee locked it up today with a very impressive win over Vanderbilt, 30 to nothing. Big day for Daryl Dickey, three touchdowns. Touchdowns. This one to Eric Swanson, who broke a tackle. All-out blitz that led to the man-to-man -man coverage. I want to tell you what, Tennessee has some great outside receivers, Swanson and Tim McGee. Florida, an impressive winner over Florida State, 38-14. to Now, what's the fake here? This is going to freeze the free safety, and that allows Ricky Nathiel, the wide receiver from Florida, to get behind. He almost drops the ball, but manages to hold on 75 yards later. Florida's in. Florida finishes 9-1-1 in Florida State, going to the Gator Bowl. All right, Pat. And at halftime, of course, we'll have all the scores and highlights. We'll also talk live with Iowa coach Hayden Fry, and we'll take a special look back with Jerry Faust. But right now, let's go back to the Orange Bowl and rejoin Brent Musburger. All right, Jim and Pat, thank you very much. Well, Eric Parsegan, you were the head coach at Notre Dame for 11 years. Jerry Faust for five. What went wrong with the Faust era? Well, one could speculate, I guess, endlessly, and I guess it's a combination of a number of factors, Brent. But to summarize it maybe in just one word, inconsistency. But that's all history now. It's behind him. Jerry gave it his best shot. He's an energetic guy and an optimistic guy. I predict that he will resurface as a head football coach. Now, how about the game itself here this afternoon and these two teams? Well, looking at the statistics, defensively, these two teams are pretty well evenly matched. And both of them have played particularly well in the second half of the season. But when one looks at the offensive side of the ball, there's a dramatic difference. Look at the yardage difference between Testaverde and Burline, the starting quarterbacks of the two teams. Look at the touchdown passes, 19 to 3, and look at the big plays, 6 to 0. So you can see that Miami can really score on big plays. All right, so we'll be back with the kickoff. It's Notre Dame against Miami, and we will have it in just a moment. Enjoy the view along the way. Enjoy the view. Cavalier. Freedom for people who know where they're going. Drive today, Chevy. I don't want to live today, Chevy. Cavalier. DP Gym Pack. The most challenging professional exercises at home. For the ultimate in performance and value. DP Gym Pack. Fit for life. I feel great. We are ready in the Orange Bowl. Notre Dame winning the toss. They deferred, so they will get the ball to start the second half. The Hurricanes then said, we will take it to start this football game. So we will see Vinny Testaverde right off the top. Now, of course, kicking off for the Irish is John Carney, number 18, and he has been one of the best weapons employed by Jerry Faust the last couple of years. Mel Blatton is set deep for the Canes, standing on his own goal line. Blatton, six yards deep, has elected to come out. Not real good judgment on his part. They'll put it in play at the 10. Let's go down on the field now, and here's Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Brent, thank you. I was in the locker room with Jerry Faust and the Irish before the game. The shortest locker room speech I have ever heard. It lasted about 40 seconds. He simply said, let's go kick their heads off and send them into the Sugar Bowl with two losses. He did not mention the fact that he was leaving or a win one for Jerry. So let's see how it goes today. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Pat, thank you. And so, Eric Parsegan, we'll get to see Vinny Testaverde and this talented offense that he is bringing up to the line of scrimmage. Warren Williams, 24, and Alonzo Highsmith, 30, are his running backs. And he'll start with Highsmith right away, and he comes out behind the right side of that line for about four yards. Tony Ferjanic, number 58, tackled him. 
This is the backfield that I alluded to. Vinny Testaverde, he will be a Heisman Trophy candidate next year out of Elmont, New York. There is Alonzo Highsmith. He tore up the Irish a couple years ago. William Williams is out of Fort Myers. Mike Irvin, the freshman sensation, and Brian Blades, number nine, both out of Florida. And, of course, the All-American tight end, number 84, Willie Smith. And now the Canes go into the I formation. Testaverde checks off at the line. This is Williams. And they will have about third and five as Wally Klein, number 96 of the Irish, comes in to make the stop. And the rest of this offense. And, Errol, what about the offensive line that we see here from Miami? How good are they? I think they're outstanding pass protection blockers. They've also done a good job running the ball, but their strong suit is their ability to protect Testaverde. They've done a great job this year. Here is the third down and almost five yards to go for Testaverde, who will put it up for the first time. And there's Willie Smith. First down, almost automatic. 109 catches by Willie Smith, the career reception leader here at Miami with that catch right there. And it's almost automatic, Era. Well, Testaverde reads the coverage beautifully and just dumps the ball into the open seam. And you see right there as Willie Smith from Jacksonville, Florida, 6'2", 224, had a great game against Maryland and a crucial game uh, for the Hurricanes to put him into the Sugar Bowl. Now he has a first down at 25, and Era, the point you make is they're dangerous from any spot on the field. They'll run Highsmith here trying to get the corner turned, and they cannot. They're really a big play offensive football team. You look at the stats, and there's 88 yards for a touchdown, 80 yards, 82, 79. It's just incredible. Though they're dangerous for 60 minutes. They can put points on the board, and you can't relax against this club. Jerry Faust watching from the Irish sideline and the emotions that he must go through here this afternoon. His last game as head football coach at Notre Dame. Lou Holtz takes over the regime next year. This is second and eight. Testaverde to pass in this situation. And he throws to Irvin underneath. He was not covered. Another first down for Miami and Troy Wilson over with the stop. Nice job by Smith driving out the defenders. And of course, Irwin just delayed underneath and then broke right over the middle. You'll see right here, see Testaverde reading his coverage, does a beautiful job, and there's Irwin coming underneath, number 47. That's his 42nd catch of the year. He's had eight touchdown passes. He's had 773 yards. What a year he's had for a freshman. He has come to the left side. Blade split to the right. They run ahead, and again, there is daylight for Highsmith out to midfield, and this will be second and short. There are any time Miami gets you defensive in the second and short like they are right now, second and three, they are even more dangerous. Right, exactly. And the thing that we talked about uh, earlier, Brent, you and I, if you recall, we were talking about it was important for the Irish to get some kind of a pass rush on Testaverde. You can't give him too much time. He's six foot five. He sees well. He's strong. He scrambles well. They've got to put heat on him. Williams straight ahead. Still another first down, Eric Dorsey, 71, taking him on right there. It is a first down. What a beautiful day it is here in Miami. We're going to have a crowd in excess of 50,000. Don Plaskinak, he is our pilot of the Goodyear Blimp here this afternoon. And there, an interesting note on him, he once was a linebacker at Miami. Played for the Canes during the 60s when George Myra was the quarterback. On first down, the handoff to Highsmith. And again, they are finding daylight in the middle of that defensive line. Figaro over to bring him down. Now, this is the defense that is on its heels right now. Figaro, who just made that tackle, they're shorthanded up front along with Dorsey and, of course, Kiernan. And Wally Klein is back from that injury he suffered a few weeks ago. Robert Banks is one of the outside linebackers out of Virginia. This is second and four for Miami against Notre Dame. Throws to Urban. And Urban is hit by Hewitt, number one. Short of the first down. 
Now here is the rest of the defense. And, oh, what about the Notre Dame defense? Well, their linebackers are outstanding. Kovaleski right there is the uh, inside linebacker. For Janik is their leading tackler. Uh, Troy Wilson, the cornerback. Haywood. Ballage has had a great year. And Lawrence at free safety, I think, is an outstanding football player. He's a junior. He'll be back. I think he's a good one. I think the two good players also, uh, Dorsey, I was watching the film of last week's game, played a great football game against LSU last week. Testaverde has his two wide receivers over to his right, and he comes back running to the short side with Williams. Notre Dame taking on that first down play. Figaro, number 48, credited with the tackle there. So this will be second and long, and again, so many weapons at Vinny Testaverde's disposal, especially number 84, Willie Smith, when you get down closer in a situation like this. They're really a deep team. They can come in there with four running backs, Oliver, Williams, Irvin, or, or uh, Bratton, and Highsmith, and they all can move. Now Blades comes back to the left for Testaverde. The Irish with three down linemen defensively trying to pressure. Testaverde, though, with a lot of time. Hits his wide receiver right there near the 20 yard line. Steve Lawrence was the defender on that play. An excellent job here of coverage, but Smith came back to the ball. Lawrence, number 23, right in the middle of the picture right there, is covering single coverage. But watch Smith come back and test already gets the ball there so rapidly. Lawrence cannot recover in time. Jimmy Johnson, the ball down. in me. my opinion, era is a strong candidate for coach of the year for the I job he's done. I certainly concur with that. He's done a remarkable job. Another first down, down to the 23. Showing still another offensive look. He slips Highsmith out as a receiver. Goes further downfield to Smith, who tried to stick with it and could not. Troy Wilson, number 12, was the defensive back. And Mike Kowaleski, the linebacker, had dropped back down into the zone. And Smith was just battling away and almost came up with a great catch. Good solid hit in there that kept Smith from catching the football. There's a, another look at it right here. Watch there. Smith has it. And then there's the contact right there that makes the difference. Now it'll be a second and 10. The ball is at the Notre Dame 22 yard line. Miami took the opening kickoff. And they have marched down from their own 10. Tester Verde signaling the pattern outside. The backs are out. He's getting good protection. He goes to the end zone and is knocked away from Irvin. Again, it is Troy Wilson, the junior cornerback who came up with a splendid play right there at the goal line. Great play, Brent is right. Troy Wilson saved the touchdown right there. He got his arm in there, knocked that ball down. Testaverde put it in there very well. Watch right here from ground level. Watch that ball zip in there and watch Troy Wilson come in there with his left arm, I believe it is, and knock that ball away right there. Great job. Super job by Troy Wilson. Two big plays in a row. Irvin, only a freshman, caught touchdown passes in eight straight games. That streak was stopped against Colorado State. This is third and ten. Testaverde with both wide men to the right. Sends one back out. He's getting good protection. Goes to the sideline. Smith making a diving effort incomplete. And Smith jammed the fingers on his right hand. You can see there's some blood already splattered down there. He may have split the finger as it went down. Might have dislocated one of those fingers. That happens often on pass reception when the ball hits the end of the fingers. He made a diving catch. It was low. Let's take a look at him diving for the ball here. He came close to catching the ball, and then the right hand jammed down into the turf here at the Orange Bowl. And there was evidence of blood there on the left side of his pants. And their backup tight end, Charles Henry, will come on to block. This will be a 39-yard field goal attempt now by Greg Cox. So the Irish stiffen. Cox's field goal is good. Time you can keep Testaverde out of the end zone, however, on a drive like that, you've got to feel it's a big plus. We'll be right back in Miami. Just about any personal computer does a better day's work with the help of an IBM Pro Printer. The Pro Printer produces high speed drafts and clear graphics. It prints with near letter quality and turns out single sheets and envelopes without removing the computer paper. Best of all, the Pro Printer costs less than $550. For a better day's work, get the Pro Printer from IBM for the finishing touch.
I thought safety belts were valuable even before General Motors increased their value with $10,000 worth of life insurance. Now, every new GM car or light truck comes with a one-year life belt certificate from MIC General. The insurance people at GM, at no extra cost, just for buckling up. I've always buckled up, but then I guess I've always been the cautious type. See your GM dealer for details, then buckle your life belt. The Orange Bowl is alive on this Saturday afternoon, and it'll be rocking on Monday night when the Chicago Bears play the Dolphins. Let's find out about Smith's injury, and here's Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Brent. Willie Smith is in the locker room now. What happened was he hit his hand right here and has a pretty bad cut right there. They expect to put some sutures in it, and they say he will be back in the game shortly. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Pat. Thank you. Now the Hurricanes will kick off with that three-point lead, and Mark Seeley, he handles the kickoff chores here. They split the duties. Greg Cox, whom you just see, handles all of the extra points and the field goals. Now, the Irish have a big weapon back deep. And that is Tim Brown, number 81. He ignited this team to start the second half against Michigan State earlier this year when he took it the distance for a touchdown that turned that game completely around. Let's see if the Hurricanes go away from him and elect to have Alvin Miller return it. Well, that's one way to do it. Just take it out of the end zone. Hey, that takes care of all the returns. I always loved it when my kickers put that ball out of the end zone. Let them start at the 20. Tomorrow on CBS, the NFL Today at 12.30. We'll have Jim Brown live in the studio. We'll talk to Walter Payton. And many of us now believe that Payton has surpassed Brown, and he's the greatest running back of all time. Jimmy the Greek will take a look at that confused playoff picture in the AFC. And then, of course, following that, you'll see the Rams. They need a big win down in New Orleans. And later in the day, the big one, of course, is San Francisco against Washington tomorrow on CBS. Here is first down now for Berline and the Irish. Alan Pinkett is the tailback, and they run him on the draw play up the middle, and he bursts out to the 25-yard line. George Myra Jr., number 45, was there to bring it up. You remember his daddy as a quarterback. Sure did. I played against him when right in this stadium right here. He was a great quarterback. Here's Plants, number 62, the center, with some of the Miami Hurricane coaches think he, he does a lot of holding. Uh, he's got his arm outside the frame of the body, which is illegal. You got to keep it inside the frame of the body. It's only illegal if they throw the flag. Second down, and they throw the pass to the sideline, and that is Tim Brown, and he was juggling the ball. It is not a completion. He is arguing with the official who overruled the call there from the side, and they said that Brown did not have possession as he was going out of bounds. The trailing official, who did not have the good view, had ruled a completion on the play. Era, how did you see this one? Let's see from this angle. He has it in his left hand. He juggles the ball. Oh, is that? Oh, he. Well, I think maybe it was down under his leg there. It came down. No possession. The call was right. Brown made a nice case for it, though. Could be a pretty good lawyer. Third down and four for Berline. He splits the backs. Stands now. Moves over a yard closer to him. Berline rolling to the left, throws incomplete. He had Stams coming out of the backfield. You know, Berline, uh, Brent, had surgery in April, you know, and we're talking to some of the coaches, both Ron Hudson and Mike Stock, work with the backs, and, it, and his accuracy has really been effective. Now, there was a classic example. They had the receiver wide open. They would have maintained possession of the football, and he overthrew the receiver. I think, you know, I think he's had a tough year this year because his stats in previous years have always been better, so I think that injury has definitely been a factor in his performance in 1985. Well, Danny Sorensen to punt. Perriman, who's a dangerous return man, he's back from a one-game suspension. Had it on the 38, trying to turn the corner. He goes out of bounds at about the 43-yard line, where it will be first down. It'll be Miami's second possession, a 37-yard punt, and a six-yard return. We're in the first quarter of the Orange Bowl. Miami leads it by a field goal. Some have it, some don't. Afrin doesn't have it. Dristan doesn't have it. Only Sinex has it for stuffy noses. Ooh. That quick feeling of relief from instantly penetrating Vicks Vapors, plus a powerful decongestant that opens nasal passages so you breathe freely. Ah, oh, complete relief. For hours and hours, Sinex has it for instant and complete relief in regular and 12-hour extra strength. From Vicks, of course. 
being there. That's what being a State Farm agent is all about. When Scott and Vicki started to outgrow their insurance, we got together and reviewed it all. The new house, a second car, life and health coverages too. A State Farm family insurance checkup can be a big help. It's free, and it's there because things change. And like a good neighbor... Right, Jason? Tonight, terrorists kidnap Hawk's loved ones. I want to go home. Now, he must free them. Oh, they're as good as dead. Airwolf, a mission of the heart tonight. Short road trip for the Goodyear Blimp to this one. Pompano Beach, Florida, where this crew is headquartered. And they'll be giving us some beautiful aerial shots here. What a nice day to be up in the air over Miami. He says he's going to give me a ride in that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Charles Henry, number 82, has replaced the injured Willie Smith at tight end. And Nera, how much will that affect him? Well, I think he's just a sophomore, 62, 225. But the fact that, uh, you know, it's tough to replace a guy like Smith. But I'm sure that uh, they'll go to Irwin and Blades because those are their good receivers. They'll put it up on first down, too, Era. He'll drop it off on the screen. And this is Highsmith, a good receiver coming out of the backfield. Breaks a tackle. Comes across the 40, trying to get the corner turn inside the 30-yard line, and almost broke it all the way. Marv Spence was the last defender between Highsmith and the end zone, and he brought him down, but Alonzo gained 35 yards. Alonzo is some kind of football player. 6'1", 228, a beautifully executed screen. Watch to your left. Testa Barley looks it off away from it, dumps the ball off to Highsmith. He picks up a great couple of great blocks, and then he shakes the tackler right there. That's Kovaleski. And then he breaks against the grain, as Bratton did a year ago against Boston College. And finally, Spence comes in, but he, <laughs> Highsmith runs right on through him for another five. First down now at the Irish 20. And they'll run Williams. He gets to the 15-yard line. Figaro, number 48, who's been in on several tackles, brings him down there. And Jimmy Johnson standing next to his offensive signal caller. He okays the plays that are sent down from the press box, but he oversees everything. And Gary Stevens, their offensive coordinator, who played for Johnny Ray, that uh, was on my staff for a number of years, a great defensive coach, uh, is doing a super job as their coordinator. Second down and six. Testaverde changing up. Here's Williams, another big gaping hole in that Irish front. Kowaleski and Ferjanic forced to make that stop down at the 10-yard line, and that is another first down for the Canes. He cuts it to the right behind O'Connor and Davis. Look at it from the end. Watch him cut to your left of your screen. Right there, you've got Davis and O'Connor making good blocks. Overreaction by the... Notre Dame defense, and he picks up good yardage. First down, Testaverde checking the Irish defense. And this is Bratton who just checked in, and he bolts down to the five-yard line with his first carry from scrimmage. Steve Lawrence, 23, who is the free safety, tackling him there, and Testaverde checking over to the sideline where the play is being signaled to him right now. I'll tell you, he is really strong. I can't believe the things that he can do. He's really an outstanding. He bench presses 315, squats 400 and some odd pounds. And that's a guy that's a quarterback, sort of a skinny looking guy, but I wouldn't want to tangle with him. Second and six. This oh. is Williams, hole in the middle, going in. is about to become a very trying time from Notre Dame because if there's any team in the country you do not want to fall behind early it's the Hurricanes of Miami there didn't seem to be a whole lot of resolve on that either that it was exceptionally well blocked and just like that 
with almost six minutes to go in the first quarter. Miami has taken a lead on Faust and the Irish, 10 to nothing. That touchdown took them five plays, 55 yards, and look at another gaping hole in that defensive front. That was a beautiful trap there by Alekna on Dorsey. Dorsey came upfield expecting something wide, and he popped right through the middle for the touchdown. We'll be right back, and the Canes will be kicking off again to Notre Dame. Mr. Goodranch knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Goodrench Motor Oil takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. Does your antacid work fast enough? It seems to take forever. Does your antacid last long enough? No, I've got to take it again. Maybe your antacid isn't strong enough. Try new double strength Mylanta 2. Mylanta 2 has nearly double the antacid medicine, nearly double the anti-gas medicine, nearly double the acid neutralizing power of any leading brand. That's real relief with the double strength difference. Double strength, that's my kind of difference. New Mylanta 2. Pride's really showing. Nobody shines like you. Yeah, you make America work, and this fight's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This fight's for you. Mark Selig preparing to kick off for Miami to Notre Dame. That scoring drive, and it happened ever so quickly in the first quarter. Miami has had possession of the ball for 8 minutes and 25 seconds, and the Irish for only 45 seconds. And that pass by Burline that was overthrown could have maintained possession for him. Wow, where's that going? Out of the end zone again. Woo. Coming out to the 20-yard line, Coach. Let's take a look at that touchdown play one more time, Coach. If you watch the left guard right here, Alekna will come across and trap Dorsey, who comes up, and of course, the ball goes right into the end zone. Watch the left guard trap Dorsey, the left defensive tackle. He pulls right there, and you, that's why that hole was so wide. Now it's first down for Steve Furline. The Irish with a 10-point deficit. And it is the tailback on the pitch. There are penalty markers down. Winston Moss, 92, took Pinkett on, and there were penalty flags. A mistake by the Irish. Blocking below the way. So that will put them in the hole again and nullify a game by Alan Pinkett. Let's take a look at the backfield for the Irish. There are how frustrating it must be for someone like Alan Pinkett, who has been a champion. Frank Stams, of course, is his blocker. He was wide open on that play that would have maintained possession. Tim Brown's a good one. He's got a great future. Reggie Ward, speed on the outside. And Tom Raider took over as the Notre Dame tight end during the season. I think Lou Holtz is going to be happy with Timmy Brown. I think he's got tremendous potential. He's just a sophomore. He'll be back. And uh, Stams is just a sophomore. But basically, this is a senior team, but Miami has got 21 of their 22 players back. This is a young football team. So you got to take your hat off, as you pointed out earlier, to Jimmy Johnson and his coaching staff. Mark Green checked in as wide receiver. Comes in motion toward the line of scrimmage, and they run Pinkett in that direction. He gets out to about the 17-yard line. John McVeigh, defensive end, was there to meet him. Well, there is the young man who has had an unbelievable career at Notre Dame, but it has been completely overshadowed by the problems in the one-loss column. He's had a tough time against Miami. Those are the numbers against Miami in his last three years, and his best day was 15 carries and 57 yards. He just has not been able to manage big yardage against the Hurricanes. 
Second down and 12. Merline throwing underneath the pink and complete. But this is going to leave the Irish with a third and 10. Rod Carter, 91, was over there to bring Pinkett down. Now, what about the offensive line at Notre Dame era? How do you rate these blockers? Well, this Scan Scandal is their best blocker. Uh, Plants has played exceptionally well during the year, and also Perino, the right tackle. This is a big line, but probably lacks a little quickness and has had a tough time getting consistency during the year. Irish need a big play, a spark here. It's third and nine. Off the fake, Berline's in trouble. Eludes a tackler, but now they gang up on him. The ball is loose, but the Irish fell on it. Ron Plants, their center, fell on that ball. A little misdirection pass, taking the ball to Stams. He gets pressure immediately by Brown. Jerome Brown, who played it. He's an outstanding player. And finally, I think he tries to deal the ball off here. But it's recovered by Plants, and Notre Dame will punt. It'll be Sorensen punting again, and the Hurricanes will have possession and a 10 point lead. Perriman signaling fair catch at the 41 yard line, and that's where the Canes will put it in play. 35 yard punt, and now it's Miami's turn, and this is a team that feels it has a great shot at a national championship, not next year, but this year. They'll go to the Sugar Bowl to take on Tennessee. Right now, they lead the Irish 10 to nothing. Sometimes getting car financing turns out to be one long hassle. What uh, kind of car did you have in mind? A Fiero. Oh, an Italian car. It's a Pontiac from General Motors. You know, Motors. they make Chevrolets, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs. GMC trucks. This is none of my business, but those are not Italian cars. Make it easy on yourself. Finance your car or truck right at your GM dealer with GMAC. You understand, we do have to know what you want to do with all these cars. Nobody knows more about financing and leasing cars than GMAC. Try one on. Celebrity Eurosport. Something more from today's Chevrolet. Celebrity Eurosport. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Celebrity. On the NFL Today, Jim Brown live. A conversation with Walter Payton and Joe Montana reflects on his toughest season. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. The Los Angeles Rams need a win. They go into New Orleans and, of course, Wade Phillips coaching the Saints the rest of the way. His daddy, Bum Phillips, stepping down. And then our big doubleheader game, San Francisco against Washington. Irv Cross on hand in Washington. With Pat Summerall and John Madden, I'm sure all three of them today are meeting with Joe Gibbs and also Bill Walsh. Now it is first and ten for the Hurricanes. The ball is at the 41-yard line. Testaverde on a roll to the left. He'll throw out of it. It is complete to Henry. The backup tight end. And he comes across midfield. Figaro is there. That was a great throw by Testaverde. I tell you, because he's running to his left. He didn't have that much room to hit Henry. It's misdirection pass. Guard, guards here pull. It's number 77, O'Connor, leading, getting a block. Look at him put the ball right there for Henry. Great shot. Already, Testaverde is 6 of 9 for 87 yards. Here, I would think the Irish are going to have to change up and throw a blitz package. They're not getting any rush no. at all with the defensive front. You've got to get to him somehow. Handing off to Highsmith, and this will leave them with second and long. It's a little better job in there by the defense. The interior, they've been heard it so far in this quarter uh, the defensive line is not supported as well as they should linebackers haven't been doing a bad job the secondary is doing a fairly decent job but the line has been hurt there's been big holes opened up in there Daryl Oliver number 37 he has replaced Warren Williams at the halfback spot they have four quality running backs here at Miami and they are all back next year second and eight off the play fake to Oliver. Testaverde coming toward the sideline. Complete the blades. And he is inside the 30-yard line. Another Miami first down. Boy, I'll tell you, Testaverde can really hum that ball. Watch here from a ground-level view. Gets a good fake in there. You can't see that. But watch that ball go right over your head right here. Just boom, right in 
to Blades right there, number nine. He turns back inside. That ball got there really quickly. First and ten. Estaverde coming up to the line. Calmly and coolly eyeing a defense that he has been cutting to shreds here in the early going. Another audible. Fumble at the line of scrimmage. Testaverde was pulling away and he fumbled the ball. And Henry, who has replaced Smith, pounced on that loose ball and he has contributed, hasn't he? They haven't lost too much. They give up an All-American and here comes a young man who's made a fine catch and then recovers a fumble. Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Brent, you know when he plays school lot football, you want a guy who can throw the ball in about 10 receivers, right? That's the way it usually works, and that's the way Miami works its system. They work at getting good receivers from all over the country. They perpetuate a system where receivers are welcome on this team, thanks to Hubbard Alexander, who runs that operation, and they do it well. Let's go back to you, Brent. On second and 10, they run the draw play, and Oliver is stuffed right there at the line of scrimmage. Wally Klein, 96. Comes in to make the stop. He's a six foot nine inch defensive lineman. There are the one place that they look first and foremost for wide receivers is right here in the state of Florida. I think that Florida right now turns out as many quality high school receivers as any state in the country. Now you can look right in the Big Ten where we did so many games this fall, the number of players that come right out of this state. This is a great football state. Here's third and ten for Testaverde. His quality wide receivers to the right are covered under pressure. Going back, throws. It was not a good throw. The receivers were covered over there on that far side. That was Marv Spence, number 25. He threw into heavy coverage on the run that time. You can see here Testaverde is going to roll clear out to the right. But the timing of this play seems to be off. It looks like they wanted to screen the ball. That This is one time where the protection broke down. Testaverde was forced clear out of the pocket. Not a very good judgment on his part to throw at that time. And Eric Greg Cox will attempt a 47-yard field goal. He has already made one this afternoon from 39 yards out. That put the Canes on the board. Then they scored a touchdown. They're up 10 to nothing. Cox's field goal pulls it a little bit, but it's good. Two field goals by Cox. A touchdown by Williams. Cox coming into this ball game was 9 for 15. Now he's had 11 field goals and 17 attempts, but that was pretty impressive, those two. So we'll be back. The Canes will kick off, and Notre Dame will try it again. And right now, they lead us need a sustained drive. Boston, you have two more minutes for your choice. We still need a linebacker. What does the computer say? It says check the master file back at the office. Office? The office. Atlanta, stand by. Okay, we need a linebacker. If your business's future depends on information and records, a Hayes modem would help it run smarter. Computer says Hannes Vega, unless Boston gets... Boston, what's the delay? Office, Commissioner. Boston selects Ortega. Office. Hey. A real sleeper? Hey, no! Say yes to the future with Hayes. I'm Dan Marino, and at Christmas time, I take care of the hands that take care of me. I pass isotoner gloves to the hands that catch my passes, and I hand off these custom fit isotoners to the hands that carry the ball. And of course, I never forget to take care of my blockers, because how can I throw a pass when I'm laying on my back? <laughs> this Christmas, give isotoner gloves by Aris, and take care of the hands that take care of you. Will the 49ers burst Jay Schrader's bubble? Or will they too become believers? Get the story on the NFL today. Well, the expanding skyline of the city of Miami. Every time I come down here, I can't believe all the building that goes on around here. I've been coming here since 1958 when I coached in the North South game. I stayed out at Key Biscayne Hotel. And I'm like you. I told my wife when we were here, I looked at that skyline and I said, look at that. We probably had one or two big buildings in town. Now it's a major, major city. Well, I'll tell you, it's where Latin America meets North America. And this is going to become a cultural center sometime in the next decade. And this football team 
is doing a fine job. They won a national championship under Howard Schnellenberger, and now they're closing in on what they hope is a second one under Jimmy Johnson, and obviously Oklahoma, Penn State. They'll have something to say about that. And again, Selig knocks one out of the end zone. Of course, in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas on New Year's Day, we're going to have Texas A&M against Auburn. Here's how the Aggies got there. College Station, Texas. The Longhorns against the Aggies. The winner would get a trip to Dallas in the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. Jackie Sherrill had a sophomore quarterback at the control. And he would lead them to three touchdowns in the third quarter, hitting Jeff Nelson with that scoring pass. And then they turned it over to the Aggie defense. They stopped Texas three times inside the five-yard line, turning back Edwin Simmons on that fourth down play. For Fred Akers, it was a second straight year that he would lose to this talented Texas A&M team. And now Jackie Sherrill will take the ball club into the Cotton Bowl against Bo Jackson and the Auburn Tigers. 1.30 Eastern time on CBS. Now we are live in the Orange Bowl and Notre Dame will have a second and nine. Alan Pinkett on first down and watch Rod Carter come over and stand him up right there and Bain 18 helping out with the tackle making it second and nine with Brown coming in motion for the Irish Burline rolling in that direction. Now he'll keep it and head for the sideline turns the corner steps out of bounds at the 31. You got outside to contain that time Brett you get to the corner like that you put a lot of pressure on the defense they were retreating back to cover in coverage and of course Burline sees the opportunity to take it and make a first down with two seconds to go in the first quarter Notre Dame picks up its first first down in this football game and the play is being brought in from the sideline. First and ten, the ball is at the 31-yard line. Brown in motion will take the pitch from Berline, and coming around, he gets out to the 34-yard line, and Bruce Fleming, number 58, who is playing today for the Canes, tackled him right there. So we've come to the end of the first quarter. So far, it has been all Miami. Two field goals and a touchdown. They're shutting out the Irish, 13 to nothing. The good life in America means reaching for your dream. We help nearly one out of three Americans live a little better tomorrow. We've got $77 billion invested in this country today. We are the equitable. We are the equitable. Yes, we'll help you live the good life. We are the equitable. We can help your dreams come true. A lot of long-distance companies would like you to think they're just like AT&T. But take a closer look and see how different they really are. No operator service, no immediate credit for wrong numbers, and no service from many small towns. Only one long-distance company gives you full service, only AT&T. Sometimes there's just no substitute for the real thing. AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. AT&T, the right choice. This is CBS. It's holiday time, and once again, Hater Hardware features fine workshop tools for good old dad. Gifts like these, sure to please. A 10-inch shopcraft bandsaw for the do-it-yourselfer. A handy Weller solder gun kit. Duracell flashlights and batteries. And a Black & Decker variable speed reversing drill. Savings, quality products, and friendly service. Traditions of Hater Hardware. As Jim Hater says, when your name's on the store, you care a lot more. At Velvet Sheen Outlet Stores, you'll find great gift ideas for the whole family. Like first quality nylon jackets with flannel lining and assorted styles and colors. Now just six to nine dollars. First quality long sleeve t-shirts and three quarter sleeve jerseys for boys are just a dollar forty nine each. Velvet Sheen has the largest selection of first quality crew neck and hooded sweatshirts and drawstring warm up pants. Now just seven fifty and at ten dollars. Get more Christmas for less money at all seven Velvet Sheen Outlet stores. Sports of all sorts, Sunday night at 1130. 
CBS Sports presents college football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, it's the Notre Dame Fighting Irish versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's game is sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Diversified products helping America stay fit. Get fit for life with DP products. And by IBM and its family of personal printers for the finishing touch. We start the second quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Notre Dame with the ball and trailing by 13 points. Second and seven. Burline brings the offense up to the line of scrimmage. Alan Pinkett is to his right. Frank Stams to his left. Now Brown comes in motion. They'll run Pinkett. Picking his way, it'll be third and four. And George Myra Jr., number 45, plugging up that hole in the middle. And let's get out of the field. Here's Pat O'Brien. Pat. Thank you very much, Brent. They may be ahead 13 to nothing, but they're sure getting beaten up quite a bit. Willie Smith is back in the game. Now, he says his hand feels fine. Brian Blades has a bruised right hand, and now Winston Moss thinks he may have popped something in his left leg. They're testing that now. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Pat. Third and three for Berline and the Irish. Notre Dame needing a big play to come alive here and jump back into this contest. The Hurricanes have dominated them throughout so far. Burline down the right side and open as he said. He's out of bounds and it is at the 41 yard line. Good, good throw by Burline. This is what Notre Dame needs to maintain possession of the ball. Keep it away from Testaverde. Here it is from the end zone right at drop back pass. You see Easton wide open on the sideline. Apparently there was a coverage error there because Benny Blades was coming over didn't have any support at all. Number 36 there. And as a result of that 21 yard gain era the Irish have a first down and they've crossed midfield for the first time here this afternoon. They split the backs. Miami shows blitz. Berline rolls in that direction. Good pickup. It's intercepted. It's going to be six for the Hurricanes. There will be no stopping Benny Blades. He'll go the distance. Interception by Blades. And that stuck a knife in the back of Jerry Faust. Greg Cox to attempt the extra point. result of Blades performance the Hurricanes are dominating up 20 to nothing judgment on the part of Burline watch Blades Benny Blades number 36 step right inside time it beautifully now, folks what you're looking at here is a world-class sprinter this guy can really run no one's going to catch him beautiful defensive work by Benny Blades Miami with the lead, 20 to nothing on that interception of a Berline pass. We'll be right back. Tell Mommy I'm on my way. General Motors is embarking on an odyssey down roads paved with technological wonders that might seem like science fiction. But at GM, they're becoming reality now. Laser body testing. Sophisticated instrument displays. Electronic navigation systems. The 21st century lies dead ahead and today's GM is leading the way there. The GM Odyssey. Science, not fiction. Most people know you can only buy a Curtis Mathis at a Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center. They know delivery and installation are included, and there's a four-year limited warranty on every product. But what people don't know is just how long a Curtis Mathis really lasts. Oh! Well, time to get another Curtis Mathis. Yep. For products that last year after year after year, this year make it a Curtis Mathis Christmas. It is a game for pride and for honor. The 86th Annual Army-Navy Game, next Saturday on CBS Sports. 
Notre Dame will change quarterbacks. They'll turn it over to Terry Andruzak out of Allen Park, Michigan. The 6'1", 180 pound sophomore comes in following that interception and return for a touchdown by Blaze. Sealing to kick it off. The Canes dominating up by 20 points. Back deep to return. Brown and Miller for the Irish. Miller is 17. This is what it looks like from the Goodyear blimp overhead on a clear day. Brown says, I'll try this one. And he's got great speed trying to get the corner turned, and he slips down there at the 20 yard line. Did you see the kickoff man make penetration on that play? Seeley got all over Brown and slowed him up. So here come the Irish and their second unit with Andrew Zach now quarterbacking. He replaces Berline, and Berline, with that interception, set a negative record for the Irish. He has now thrown more interceptions, 36, than any quarterback in Notre Dame history. On the first down, there is the handoff to Tom Monahan, and Monahan breaks out to the 35-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain, and it looks like the second unit's going to try to make the most of its opportunity. They played last week and did an exceptional job. They moved the football against LSU when they were in there. They seem to play with more enthusiasm. It looks as if they want to play. And looking at the, uh, the tape of the game, why this unit moved the ball very effectively. Now, Monahan, he is number 26. Hiawatha Francisco, he is 33, and he is the tailback. They fake to him. Andrasak, who's a good runner, rolling to the right, and he is taken on right there by number 93, John McVay. Andrasak is more of a run action pass and bootleg type passer. He can roll out, and he rolled out that time, no receivers open, so he didn't have a chance to hit anyone. As you see there, he's 6'1, 181. And he's had some good games for the Irish. And if you want to speculate that Lou Holtz is going to bring the option attack to Notre Dame, you've got to think he's going to want a running quarterback like this. Here comes Hiawatha. And he makes himself a hole and gets close to a first down. Benny Blades forced to make that stop there. Number 36 has been doing everything in that secondary. That's twice they've blocked very well off the offensive left side to your right side of the screen there. And a beautiful job in there of blocking and also running. You see Meyer at number 45. Watch the block on Myra, number 45, the middle linebacker, right here, coming into your, right in the center of your screen. That was Monahan who came out leading the play as the fullback and got the job done. Andrews out going to play fake, going to drop it off to Monahan, and it was short. They set the play beautifully, and Monahan was open, letting the rushman come off the block toward Andrews out. So this will now be a third down situation. And Jerry Faust hopeful that that second unit can keep it going here. Terry Andrzejczyk is out of Allen Park, Michigan. He's a sophomore. Oh, Florida put away Florida State today, didn't they? And Alabama leading our Cotton Bowl team, Auburn. And Tennessee, of course, will go to the Sugar Bowl. Andrzejczyk back to throw it and open his Miller first down. Stepping out of bounds inside the 35. I like the way this second unit operates. He's in the Navy game. He took the team right down the field on two or three occasions, and of course that's when the controversy started between which quarterback should start, Berline or Andrzejczyk. And Jerry uh, did start Berline most of the time, but here he is delivering an absolute strike. Good pass route. That's Alvin Miller. Has great speed. It's a good drive by the second unit. shows blitz like they're coming at Andrzejczyk and they run Hiawatha and he is tackled there at the 34. Jerome Brown number 98 6 3 275 pounds one of the great pass rushers good movement for a big guy he's about 4 8 in the 40 yard dash and I mean that is really good for a big man he's tired looks like there is a penalty marker down era and they are conferring and seeing Jerry Faust, I want to remind everybody that at halftime, we'll converse with Jerry and have him look ahead. What's next for Jerry Faust? And that is coming up at halftime. Of course, Jim Nance. Offside, defense, first down. 
So it'll be first and five. The ball is inside the 30. And Era, I want to get some thoughts from you on how Lou Holtz will do, too. As Notre Dame looks ahead to next year. 12-15 to go here in the first half. And Francisco with another first down and the ball down at the 20-yard line. Moving the ball very effectively. Jimmy Johnson watching as his defense being sent back for the first time here this afternoon. I talked to Mike Stock yesterday about the, the game itself, and he said if the offensive unit, the first unit, didn't move the ball, they were going to go to the second unit, and they certainly have done that in this second quarter here early. Split backs now. Monahan, and he gets to the 15-yard line. Myra tackled him there. Using a little handback trap in there that's been very effective on this drive. This is going to be a second and five for Monahan and Andrzejczyk. And the rest of this Irish attack. Andy Heck is the second unit tight end, number 88. And Alan Pinkett checks in. And he'll carry the ball. Hole inside the 10, close to the five-yard line with a great burst. He gets an Irish first down. This is the area where the Irish have had an awful lot of trouble since you, since Faust's tenure here. Here we'll take another look at it from the end zone. You see some big splits in there, some big holes in there. A double team on, on uh, Jones, number 86. And you can see Pinkett take that daylight. He's been a great bat. But this is where the Irish have had trouble, getting the ball in the end zone. Let's see if this second unit can do it. On first and goal, Pinkett picks his way close to the three-yard line. Myra again, along with Darren McMurray, number 66. There you can see 45 getting up as some goal line reinforcements come in. One of them, big 98, Jerome Brown. Boy, he played a game for us up in Maryland that day. Boy, he really put the pressure on the Gelba, the passer. He's a great pass rusher. Tennessee better get ready to block that big fella. He's a low. <laughs> Second and goal for the Irish. Monahan and Pinkett are the eyes. Here's Pinkett. Slams into the end zone for a Notre Dame touchdown. Well, that was a great drive by that second unit. You can see a little enthusiasm with that group. They really wanted to move the football. They had success. And you can see how momentum and that kind of energy, what kind of results you can get. And with that touchdown, Alan Pinkett has just tied Pete Johnson with 53 touchdowns, and that is good for fourth on the NCAA all-time career touchdown list. John Carney will attempt the extra point, and Notre Dame impressive he scores its first touchdown. It is 20 to 7. 10-23 to go in the first half. Andrzejczyk and friends indicate that we're going to have a contest yet. Here's a basic play or the key play on this drive that took him down in the scoring territory. Pinkett from the I formation with excellent blocking up front. You can see how he reads the daylight exceptionally well. And he puts it in scoring position. And here's the touchdown from ground level. Watch Pinkett as he takes the ball over the right side. Gets good blocking, but makes some of this on his own as he lunges into the end zone. You can see the ball clearly over the line. And the Irish are on the board. Alan Pinkett. A man who has deserved a lot more credit than he's received the last few years. He's just put Notre Dame back in this game, and we'll return. Today's Chevrolet is a little import called Spectrum, a spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it... Spectrumality. Solid. Spectrumality. Price. Spectrumality. Room. Spectrumality. Technology. Spectrumality. Economy and more, all part of the new Chevy Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality called... Spectrumality! today's Chevy, Chevy! It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Radio Shack has a great selection of battery-powered toys. Our kids love Galactic Man, an electronic robot that can be twisted and turned into three galactic guns. And they're thrilled with Armatron, the robotic arm that works just like a robot. They can play laboratory and simulate scientific experiments. Our kids are going to enjoy these toys so 
Mom Day. <laughs> Exciting battery-powered toys, $3.99 to $29.95, only at Radio Shack. It's a matchup of super sophomores. Danny Manning will lead Kansas against Chris Washburn and NC State in NCAA basketball next Saturday on CBS Sports. Era, our fishing boat is leaving without us. <laughs> That's some kind of size rig you got there to fish, Adam. You must catch whales with it. <laughs> there is the young man, and you cannot say enough about Alan Pickett. As the Irish move 80 yards with that second unit. And now, here comes as good offense as there is in the land. They'll be up. Bratton at the 5. The 10. Across the 20. Returns it out to the 33-yard line. Fine return by Melvin Bratton, number five. So the bowl season is upon us. And here on CBS on December 28th, we will have the Sun Bowl, and that matches the Georgia Bulldogs against the Arizona Wildcats. And then it'll be the Peach Bowl, and that will be Army against Illinois. Of course, next week we'll have the Army-Navy. And then the Cotton Bowl, and we would expect Bo Jackson to have his Heisman Trophy by then, going up against the Texas A&M Aggies, a better team than you might imagine down there in College Station. Jackie Sherrill finally putting it together. They let the rushman through. Testa Verde with those quick feet stays away, and now he's out of bounds as his receivers were covered that time. Eric Dorsey penetrated on the play. Eric Darcy played a great game last week, and he's playing a good game here. Watch him come right through and put the pressure on Testaverde right here. He'll come from the right of your screen. Right there, 71, Eric Darcy. And he flushes Testaverde out. He cannot find a receiver. He wants to throw it there, and finally uses good judgment and gets out of bounds. Arrow Willie Smith has returned. If you are not with us early, he jammed the fingers, and Pat O'Brien reporting that he suffered a deep gash. Some sutures were put in. They shot the hand, and he has returned. He's the All-American tight end. He's number 84. And now it is second and 23. Testaverde with time waiting down the middle. Complete at the 40-yard line to Brett Perham at number 33. Mike Haywood making the tackle. You see, you give Testaverde that kind of time, he's going to hit receivers when they're open. And they gave him a little too much time. Dor Dorsey could not quite get to him. Here he pulls the trigger. Bam, and Perriman's right there, makes a super catch right there. Beautiful catch, and he pays a price for it from Haywood. Their receivers always remind you of Eddie Brown whenever they do something so well. He has gone on, of course, to the Cincinnati Bengals of the NFL. This is third and one. They're in a power formation right now for the short yardage. They'll run Bratton. He has the first down. He's out beyond the 45-yard line before he's brought down. The Canes keep it rolling at the 9-21 mark. They lead the Irish. It's 20 to 7 right now. You see Jerry right there. I thought he handled this whole week, which was a very diff difficult one with the class. I talked to him on the field, Brent, just before the ball game, and he's done it right. I know it's very tough on him. It's been hard. It's been a tough five years, but he says that uh, he wouldn't trade it for anything. First and 10 for Miami. On the pitch, it is Oliver trying to get the corner turned, and he is cut off. Notre Dame with Tony Ferjanic, and Eric Dorsey is hurt. Let's go down to the field to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Well, Pat is rushing over there to find out, so he can't hear me right now. So I should have waited just a moment before we went down. We've got a second and nine. We'll get the report as soon as we can on Dorsey. Testaverde bringing the Canes up to the line of scrimmage. Irvin is slotted to his right. Perriman is split out further to the right. Testaverde looks in that direction. He throws to Irvin, who is open on the play. Beat the corner, found the seam, and got down to the 31-yard line. Haywood finally hauling him down from behind. What vision Testaverde has. He finds the receiver. He sees him, leads him perfectly right there to beat the coverage. Tremendous job by Testaverde. Haywood, number one, comes up along with Ballage 40 to bring him down. I'll tell you, he's one of the best I've seen all year because of his height, his strength, and he really reads the coverages exceptionally well. With the first down at the 32, Testaverde slotting to the left, and he'll run Bratton, who picks his way back, and he gets to the 27-yard line. Pat O'Brien's ready and in place. Let's go to Pat. 
Uh, Brent Eric Dorsey has a pinched nerve in his left shoulder. They're working on him, and they believe he will be back in. They're hitting hard out there. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Pat, they sure are hitting hard. Eric, they always have. Miami and Notre Dame have not liked each other through the years. There's been a lot of taunting, I think, on both sides in this rivalry. Yeah, for the last three years, there's been a lot of animosity, and I think there were three personal foul calls in the first quarter a year ago, but this thing has settled down. There was a little agitation in the early going, but I think it settled down to a football game, a college football game. Big defensive series for the Irish. Second and five. They trail it 20 to 7. Testaverde, who's had time over the middle. He's got Smith the tight end. The ball is jarred loose. And Pat Valage came over and made a great hit on Smith, who might have scored easily had he held on to the ball. Great ball reaction by Valage that time. Testaverde led Smith perfectly. But Ballage comes from the left of your screen here. Watch him shake Smith ball, shake the ball loose from Smith right there. Great hit by Ballage. 6'2, 198, a senior playing the strong safety for Notre Dame. Era Testaverde brings the Canes up. He is 9 of 14 for 148 yards here in the first half. This is third and five. He'll throw it again. Waiting. He's got his first down. Perriman is free. And he is brought down there at the 15. A fine tackle by Troy Wilson, who would not let him get away from him. So they sent both of their wideouts over to the left side, and Brett Perriman, who has come off the bench in this series, was able to get free. Watch Testaverde. Because of the time, he can be patient, and he waits for Perriman to cut back inside. The other wide receiver had pulled the zone in that direction, and then Wilson comes over and tackles Perriman there. It's really a tough route to stop because the inside receiver drives the defenders off, and and then Perriman breaks underneath the coverage. And of course, with their speed and Testaverde's arm. And this is Oliver era, and the Irish were certainly ready for that play. Matt Dingens was not fooled. This will be a second and nine for the Canes. 6.30 to go here in the first half. Ball is inside the 15-yard line. Bratton and Oliver are the running backs. Irvin is slotted over to the left. Perriman is the outside receiver deep. He comes back to the right complete inside the 10-yard line. And again, it is Smith, his tight end. You can see the tape there. That is where he cut his hand in the early going here against Notre Dame. Looks like he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is third and two. Eric Dorsey has returned defensively for the Irish. And Testaverde will use one of his three timeouts. He didn't like what he saw defensively. They had gone to four rushmen in that situation for the first time, and Testaverde wants to talk it over. Giving that extra effort makes winners be all you can be, brought to you by the U.S. Army. Running back Alan Pinkett is Notre Dame's all-time leading ball carrier and scorer, but he's also a serious student. A member of the National Honor Society, he's a marketing major in the College of Business Administration. Pinkett still finds time to work with kids and take part in the NCAA's National Drug Information Program. Don't waste your time with drugs and alcohol. Notre Dame's all-time leading rusher, Alan Pinkett, strives to be the best he can be. Alpha team, aggressor tank spotted. Let's go, let's go, let's go. In a battle drill, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Moving tank, track front, 2,000. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. Ah! Yeah! All that you can We win, win. the whole tank wins. The whole team wins. Not just one person. Find your future in the Army. When the Chamber of Commerce tries to sell you Miami, Florida, it's a day like this that they promise. Overhead from the Goodyear blimp, you're looking at the Orange Bowl in Miami and the start of an enormous football weekend down here in Miami. Saturday afternoon, it's the Hurricanes and the Fighting Irish. Then Monday night, those unbeaten Chicago Bears. Pay a visit on Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins. And is there any team in football that would like to stop that unbeaten record any more than the Dolphins? On third down, Testaverde will throw it to the end zone and Bratton touchdown. 
number 20 for Vinny Testaverde. And Jimmy Johnson's canes are rolling again. Pat Ballage had single coverage on Bratton. Couldn't stay with him. And of course, Testaverde put the ball right there to Bratton. Cox to attempt the extra point. He has also kicked a pair of field goals here in the first half. Five twenty-six to go, and it's twenty-seven to seven, Miami over Notre Dame. From behind the defense here, that's an official. I think we can all identify him. <laughs> You can see Bratton coming right number five. Ballage cannot stay with him. Number 40 is way behind him. And of course, it's a touchdown. So it will be up to Andrzak to see if he can rally the Irish again. They have fallen back by 20 points for the second time in this game. We'll be right back. Chemico is a leading oil and gas producer. Tenneco is America's most successful shipyard. Tenneco is insurance protection for America's families. Tenneco is a leader in paper packaging. Tenneco is one of America's largest natural gas pipelines. The Tenneco family, building on quality. The oysters we make are living on look pretty tough, but they live in a very fragile world. So when Phillips Petroleum came here to look for oil, they used aerial infrared photography to keep from disturbing places we fish for oysters. That's why I buy Phillips gasoline. Not because of what they're doing in the Delta, but because of what they're not doing. That's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, you'll find performance in everything we do. Will the 49ers burst Jay Schrader's bubble? Or will they, too, become believers? Get the story on the NFL today. Back in the Orange Bowl, and that scoring drive was an impressive one. Notre Dame had scored for the first time, and Testaverde drove the Canes 68 yards, 11 plays in 457. And overcame... A penalty and a big sack. Well, a sack where they drove him out of bounds for that lo big lost yardage, and he made it up on third down. Or the second down play. What was it, 20 yards almost? Seelig to kick it off again. The way they have put points on the board here this year, it's a wonder that Seelig isn't suffering from a sore right leg. He is an active kicker. LA average 34.2 points a game. Brown, yard deep and coming out for the Irish. And down short of the 20 yard line. Victor Moore's down to stop him. And I want to remind everybody that tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time, the NFL Today on CBS. Jim Brown and Walter Payton. We'll talk to both of them live tomorrow. And Dick Vermeil will be along. He will have a story on Joe Montana and his troubles this year as quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. And of course, the Greek will be along with his picks and taking a look at the AFC. First and ten now. Green goes in motion. He takes the pitch from Andrzak. Trying to turn the corner on the right side, and he got out beyond the 20-yard line before he's finally brought down by Selwyn Brown, number 32. I think Mark Green's got a, a good future at Notre Dame. He's a freshman, got tremendous speed, six foot 183, and uh, very similar to Timmy Brown. I think we'll see quite a bit of him next year. Well, the ball is out at the 22-yard line. Tom Monahan. And Alan Pinkett are the setbacks. This is Monahan, the first back through. He is short of a first down as Myra, 45, was there to plug that hole. His daddy was a fine quarterback. What I remember about George Myra down here at Miami was his scrambling ability. He was 
out of the old Fran Tarkenton mold, one of the first quarterbacks who could hurt you so much with the run. And, uh, he was a lot smaller than one Vinny Testaverde, let me tell you. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, Myra was good, but this Vinny Testaverde is sensational. Here is third and two, and they run Pinkett, and he gets the first down for the Irish. They maintain possession at the four-minute mark. And at halftime, we'll have the Prudential College Football Report. Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will be along with the scores and highlights. They'll show you how Tennessee got into the Sugar Bowl this afternoon. And of course, we'll also have our interview with Jerry Faust on what's next, and we'll talk to Errol Parsegian on what's next for Notre Dame with Lou Holtz moving in next year as head coach of the Irish. Chuck Lanza snapping the ball to Andrew Zack. Straight down the middle is Pinkett. Inside the 50 and the 45, he is tackled at the 42 yard line by Benny Blades. Good fake by Andrew Zack that time. Held the linebackers. And Pinkett got right into the seam between the two deep defenders. Watch here, right is from the side right here. He fakes it right to the inside. And, a, and Pinkett is wide open right down the seam. Look at the ball right there on the number. Great, great execution by the Irish. Bruce Fleming signals in the defense. Andrew Zach bobbled it a little bit. Now he takes off around the right side. And he may have gotten a first down with that last effort over there. He took on Don Ellis, the cornerback. He appeared to bobble the snap as he was pulling out, coach. Momentarily, but you can see the kind of runner that he is. He's a dangerous runner. He handles the ball exceptionally well. Coming into this ball game, he had completed 29 out of 48 for 60 percent, just throwing one interception. And he had run the ball 19 times. He's he's having a good first half here. Alabama with a six-point lead at the half, and here Miami leading Notre Dame 27-7, and this is Monahan, the second-string fullback, and he could not find any daylight as the middle of that defensive line took him down, led by John McVeigh, number 93. So the Canes have dominated this game here in Miami so far this afternoon. Vinny Testaverde has lit up the skies with his passing. It's been an effective running game. And defensively, they have stopped everything the Irish have thrown at them except this second unit. Andrzak scoring the first time after replacing Burline at quarterback. Now he's driving Notre Dame again. Open receivers. Miller who dropped the ball. Had a first down at the 22-yard line and couldn't hold on. Can't throw the ball any better than that. You've got to hang on to the football when you're a receiver. Your principal responsibility. Catch the football. Miller's got excellent speed. He's a track star in high school. You've got to catch the ball before you run with it, Alan. He comes over to the slot left this time. They split the running backs on this third and ten. Andrew Zach sending Green in motion. Coming straight back, throwing short. And there's a penalty marker down. Timmy Brown was trying to break free at about the 20 yard line, and that's where the yellow flag was directed. Oh, well, they called that on George Meyer or not? Defensive holding is the call, Era. Well, if the hand is the hand is open. Five yard penalty. Let's see if we can see right here. Let's say wait. You can see they were playing six across there in the secondary that time. And error, they were holding them right there. As long as he's in front of him. On the far side coming across, they were holding, and it was not Timmy Brown. It was on the other side coming across in the play. That's where the holding and Jerry Faust wants to call a timeout. And play has stopped here at the 215 mark. It is 27 7. Miami leading Notre Dame and the Irish using a timeout. And while they do, we'll take a break and we'll be right back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Night training. It never stops for Mr. Goodrens. 
Cars change, he changes. He picks from over 100 General Motors service schools to stay on the leading edge of service technology. He keeps up with fuel injection, turbocharger changes, new electronics, transaxle advances, you name it. He's trained to be good. He's trained to stay good. Mr. Goodwrench, no one knows your GM car better. No one. The human hand. It's not flat. It's curved. And now, finally, there's a glove built around it. Finally, from Wells Lamont, grips. The only all-purpose leather glove with a patented pre-curved design for a comfortable grip that just won't give. Grips from Wells Lamont. Look for Wells Lamont gloves at the sign of the mule. The sun beginning to set on Miami, Florida. I'll tell you what, Eric, if you drive a little bit south of here, down to the Keys, you can see the most glorious sunsets in all the world down there. Shall we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad what, idea. another two weeks? <laughs> you give the Canes about two more quick touchdowns, we'll go now. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to go to New York. You've got a lot of work to do up there. Here's third and five for the Irish. Andrzak off a play fake. Waits, and he's got the first down. He hit Frank Stams, the fullback, coming out of the backfield. He steps out at the 20-yard line. Andrzak took a pretty good shot, too, just as he got rid of the ball. You see, Johnson doesn't like the way the tempo of the game's going right now. And he's right. Sometimes it's tough to get your team back fired up again when the opposition starts to come back. Mark Green delivered the play. And he is flanked to Andrzak's left. Comes in motion. And they will run Pinkett up the middle, close to the 15-yard line. You know, Eric, I know at halftime we're going to hear from Jim Nance and Pat Hayden. I want to say something about our colleague Pat Hayden, because last week when you and I were in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at the Michigan-Ohio State game, he had a story on the Prudential College football scoreboard that, in his opinion, Lou Holtz was going to be the next coach at Notre Dame. I thought it was very solid reporting. And the way he put it all together, and uh, I think he should be congratulated for a job well done. A little bit like he used to throw the ball against my team. Second and six. Under pressure, he will not get this one out. And that is Danny Stubbs, 96, with the sack. The Hurricanes played it just right. They anticipated that Andrew Zach would roll away or uh, run action, put the blitz on from the wide side of the field, and it was perfect. Watch as he, Andrew Zach tries to roll away. Stubbs comes in here. And they guessed right, did a good job defensively. Third and 15. And now Miami goes to a nickel defensive back. Andrew Zach to throw into it. Under pressure. And he is brought down. John McVay, 93. Back to back sacks by the Kane. That's the best defense in all the world. You know, the coaches were telling Gary Stevens and the rest, or uh, Juddy, the defensive coordinator, was telling me that McVay is a relentless football player. Just stays after you all the time. Really a great contact football player. Probably one of the best conditioned football players on the team. Well, let's take a look at the Notre Dame campus in South Bend, Indiana. The University of Notre Dame's main building with its Golden Dome is one of the nation's most familiar campus landmarks. Reconstructed after a disastrous fire in 1879 virtually destroyed the university, the building symbolizes the spirit of a place dedicated to religious belief as well as higher learning. It remains the crossroads of the campus where administrators, students, and faculty rub elbows with visiting alumni and tourists. And it continues to say one thing to all, Notre Dame. Babysitting. Uh, how's the weather? <laughs> Not like it is here. 43 yard field goal attempt by Carney. Carney is 13 for 21 in field goal attempts coming into this particular attempt.
No good. Twenty-seven to seven. The score remains with forty seconds to go. Benny Testaverde bringing the offense up. Bratton and Oliver are the running backs. Perriman still in as one wide receiver, and Kenny Oliver is the other one. Testaverde with time out of bounds. Perriman was the intended receiver. Well, if there was any one play that turned this game completely around, it was this interception. Now watch here as Benny Blades, number 36, as Burline tried to get it over to the sideline. Blades stepped in, took it away. Allen Pinkett, the intended receiver, and hauled it in for the touchdown. And that was the key play of the first half. It is second and ten. Testaverde with time. Receivers were covered. He'll run up the middle and he'll get down as a smart quarterback would do in this situation not to take a hit. As for the Irish, their bright moment was the touchdown by Alan Pinkett. Their lone score in the first half. They had good blocking in there and then watch Pinkett down close to the goal line. Battling across and it's 27 7 and 20 seconds remain here in the first half. And this was their last touchdown and it is Testaverde's 20th of the year hitting Mel Bratton. And era is there any way to shut down Testaverde defensively. Well this is what we talked about uh, on our opening of the show the differences between these two teams and their passing you know you've got a team with 19 touchdown pass, or I should say Testaverde with 19 touchdown passes and Berline came in here with just three. And of course there's a big difference between the passing attacks of these two teams and I said they had to put a pass rush on they have not been able to get to Testaverde with any degree of consistency he picks up his receivers well it's a very tough chore and it's been tough for most everybody that's played him on this third down again time and he hits Oliver for the first down ball is complete at the 47 yard line. And that's another 15 yards for Testaverde's total here at Miami. Chains were not permanently moved. Testaverde pulling out. Shakes a would-be tackler, and he just overthrows everybody. There was nobody down there, and he killed the clock right there as time was running out. We've come to the end of the first half, and the fans here in Miami, they like this performance by the Kings. So we'll be right back with our halftime activities in just a moment. When do you say Start your chestnuts roasting. Deck those halls and otherwise prepare to party. Tis the season to stock up on beer. Some of that beer is going to be L.A. from Anheuser-Busch. L.A. tastes great and it's got half the alcohol. During a long party, that's a choice my friends like to have. And they do like to have fun. Is that mistletoe? I hope so. L.A. Sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. When there's full-size work to do, nothing works like full-size Chevy trucks. Well, I did a burning out to make a buck. Me and my hard-working Chevy truck. A cup of coffee, breakfast on the run. We got a job and we gotta get it done. I'm working, working, working every day with my Chevy truck. I'm working, working. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this message from your local station. This is CBS. Still looking for that silver lining? Try Ohio's Instant Lottery and win up to $100,000 instantly or the million dollar grand prize. My two favorite things start with B. Baseball and Buicks from Shot Buick. 
We have a dynamite lineup for you in 1986. You've been great supporting our team at Riverfront, and I hope you'll come on out to Schott Buick in Norwood and support our team here. We have a super selection to choose from, and for a limited time only, the lowest interest rates you've seen since the 1950s. It's like I said to Pete, this baby's got to eat. So come on out. Great car! Yeah, my dad won it on the Wheel of Fortune. Harvey, there's a band up there. I know, I see him, Dorothy. <laughs> Your place, Harv? Is this going to change our lives? Wheel of Fortune, whose life will it change tonight? It's the smash hit Jeopardy. Let's go to work. With all new facts, fiction, and fun. Oh, you said it. It's where you can win it all or lose it all. And there's always a risk. I'll risk a thousand. Watch Jeopardy. There's everything to risk. Watch Jeopardy, weeknights at 7.30 on Channel 9. See Kentucky versus Indiana next Saturday night at 8. CBS Sports presents the Prudential College Football Report. Sponsored by the Prudential. Offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Welcome back to New York. Jim Dance along with Pat Hayden on the CBS College Football Report. Miami looking good here in the first half, but Pat, where is the intensity for the Irish? I am really surprised. I thought they were going to come up fired out, fired up. But how about this Miami team? The defense really fooled Steve Berline in the first quarter here. He's trying to throw the out pattern to his left. Didn't get enough zip on the ball. Benny Blade steps in front. 61 yards later, he's in the end zone. This is a very good Miami defensive team as well as offensive team. So only two more quarters for Jerry Faust at Notre Dame. Now we should mention for the record, last week Pat Hayden correctly predicted that Lou Holtz would be the next coach of the Irish will be taking over next season. Very light schedule for college football today. In fact, later on tonight, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State will meet. Third-ranked Sooners have won, won eight straight from the Cowboys. Earlier today, number six, Florida looking good against Florida State, 38-14. to Gators will not be going bowling since they are on probation. Seventh-ranked Auburn trailing Alabama at halftime for Bo Jackson. 54 yards in the first half. It's his 23rd birthday, and today got some good news come his way. He was named the winner of the Walter Camp Award as the outstanding player in college football. Next week, he'll probably be named the Heisman Trophy winner as well. Well, Tennessee got some good news today as well. They are going to the Sugar Bowl. A very impressive win today over Vanderbilt, 30 to nothing. Daryl Dickey, three touchdowns for the Vols. The first one was to Tim McGee, only five yards. This is McGee's seventh touchdown of the, of the year. He's an All-American receiver. Receiver. Then, a little bit later, Eric Swanson, who caught two scores in the day. Now, poor defensive uh, coverage here by Vanderbilt. He is wide open. All he needs to do is fall into the end zone from about the two-yard line. And Tennessee will be going to the Sugar Bowl for the first time since 1971. And there's the man that's taking them, Johnny Majors. Georgia Tech and Georgia are going to play a little bit later on tonight. And Georgia and Arizona are going to be playing in the Sun Bowl December 28th on CBS. Houston, a major disappointment this year. Last year, they were in the Cotton Bowl. Today, they lead Rice 24 to 14 in the fourth quarter. And later on tonight, Syracuse and West Virginia. Syracuse 7 and 3 right now, looking for their first bowl game since 1979. All right, Pat. You know, here's how we stand today in the uh, final Saturday rankings in November. Now, should Penn State finish undefeated by beating Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, they would be the clear cut national champions. However, the the Lions falter, then teams number two, three, and four could lay claim to the top spot. Now this week, Jimmy Johnson, head coach of Miami, told us he believed there should be some sort of national tournament involving at least two teams. However, this year, again, there are at least four teams who seem to be in the running there for a national championship. And they have one man standing by live who's the coach of one of those teams. That's Hayden Fry. Can you tell he's going to the Rose Bowl? He's got a, a Rose tie on. You can see the tie on lapel. Even rose-colored glasses. Coach Fry, thank you very much for joining us. Hope you had a nice uh, Thanksgiving. First of all, Jimmy Johnson has said if Miami wins on January 1st and Penn State loses, they should win the national championship. What about the Iowa Hawkeyes if they were to beat UCLA? Well, if we're going to go by the poll, I think we rank number two. Then, obviously, if Penn State lost, we should be the national champions. Uh, however, I'm not that great a believer in polls. I, I, too, think we should have a national playoff. Well, how could we do that, including the Bulls? How can we have a national playoff if we have the bowl system? Well, I don't want to take anything away from the traditional bowl games that have been very good to intercollegiate athletics. And, uh, but to get a true champion, a real champion, 
uh, the only way to determine it would be with a playoff, say, of the uh, top four teams that are uh, voted by the polls to be uh, in a playoff and uh, let the two winners uh, play it off like the Super Bowl. Coach, it's been a great year for the Big Ten. Six teams are going to postseason action. Big Ten has had problems in the past, though, in the bowls. Quickly, how important is it this year for the Big Ten to look good in the postseason? Well, I feel like we have the strongest uh, Big Ten teams that we've had in uh, 10 or 15 years. Very balanced uh, league, uh, extremely tough, big, powerful football teams. But we've added a new dimension in recent years, and that's throwing the football. And I think that will help all of us in the bowl games. All right, Hayden Fry, good luck to the Hawkeyes. January the 1st in the Rose Bowl against UCLA. Pat, let's get back to that national championship talk. What are the chances of that possibly happening, a tournament? Well, the coaches are in favor of over 60% of them. I think you're going to see a national championship tournament within four years. All right, there are already in football playoffs underway. That takes place in Division Two and Division Three. Here's some of the action today. Rhode Island's Tom Earhart threw for five touchdowns. Rhode Island over Akron. It was Georgia Southern dropping Jackson State in a shutout. Augustana won their 35th in a row. However, next week, the Vikings will be going against Central College of Iowa, a 71 to nothing winner today against Occidental. And when we come back, Brent Musburger will have a special interview with Jerry Faust. You're watching the Prudential College Football Report here on CBS, where the playoff scores continue from around the country. It's a jungle. That's how it feels when you're searching for life insurance. The natives don't speak your language. You feel lost, in the dark, scared. But there is a sign of civilization. With Prudential, your agent will explain things clearly and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you feel comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. Powerful new financial help is coming. The Rock, the Prudential, is now more than insurance. It's mutual funds, IRAs, stocks and bonds, new products and new ideas, as well as new forms of insurance. It's rock-solid financial help for us all. The Rock, the Prudential. It's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Again at halftime, it's Miami in front of Notre Dame, 27 to 7. Let's go back to the Orange Bowl and Brent Musburger. Brent? Well, Jim, certainly it's the end of an era down here in the Orange Bowl, a brief one at that. And Jerry Faust, of course, resigning earlier in the week. And yesterday I had an opportunity to speak to Coach Faust. Jerry, I think what everybody wants to know is what is next for Jerry Faust? Where do you go from here now? Well, I don't know, Brent. I, uh haven't had much time to think about it. We're trying to get ready for Miami. Uh, uh, anybody out there wants to offer me a job as a head and major college football coach or, or in the business world, I'll look at it. And uh, I think I need a new, uh, fresh start. I think Notre Dame needs a fresh start. And uh, I think it's good for both of us. And uh, so I'm open for anything that, uh, that can come my way. You would like to coach again. You'd like to try again, wouldn't you, to prove that you can uh, still win football games? Well, yes, definitely. You know, I, I feel that I've learned a lot in the last five years. and. I think uh, what I've learned and how I've learned it and, and, the, and the type of teams we played and s things like that, that uh, starting uh, brand new again and starting from base one uh, in a program that uh, be a lot of different things and be a lot uh, easier to get going. And uh, uh, because, uh, you know, I, I came up there uh, uh, as a r real rookie and I think now th through what I've been through that uh, I'm an experienced man in the aspect and I hope that I have a lot to offer college football. and. Uh, and I really feel uh, next time around uh, uh, we'll have a lot more success. Jerry, you came out of a real good high school program. You won all the time. Can a high school coach move immediately into a situation like Notre Dame or any division 1A school and win? I, I know that I've got my doubts about it. You've been through it. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think they can. I, I think it, it, it depends on the timing and it depends on the situation, you know, where you are and where what you're doing, you know. Uh, I've seen uh, coaches from other levels, professional, come down and at uh, the college level and haven't been able to be successful as far as wins and losses. And I don't know if that's where 
uh, the bottom line lies with wins and losses, with, with success as far as being a coach. But I, I really feel that uh, uh, that uh, a coach, if he has the right timing, you know, and things go well, uh, uh, they can be a success no matter what level they come from. I think the thing that, that, that was the biggest difficulty I had was we didn't win right in the beginning. And that sort of set the tone. And I think it's important, especially at a school like Notre Dame, that you win right away. Coach, how tough was it yesterday at practice? He said goodbye to your players one-on-one. -on -one. Well, it was pretty tough. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you learn to love these young men after you've worked with them, you recruited them, you worked with them four or five years, and some of the comments that they made uh, uh, really hit home. And uh, it, uh, it made me proud to be a, their coach. And uh, it, was, it was very tough emotionally. Uh, because I'm in coaching because I love young people and I want to see them become better people in life and, and that's why I went into coaching and I learned a lot from my father who was a great coach and, and uh, uh, a great person, he is a great person and so therefore I tried to exemplify some of the things that he has done with young people and, and uh, hope that I've been able to do that with young people I've worked with and touched them in a way maybe other than uh, on the football field but touched them as a person that, that maybe they'll be, able to be better people in life. A nice man, but it did not work out. Now, Eric Parsegan, you took over at a tough time at Notre Dame. Lou Holtz is coming in. What does Lou bring to this job? Well, first of all, he brings 16 years of successful college football experience. And as I pointed out to a number of people when uh, Jerry Faust was uh, appointed the head football coach at Notre Dame, I had had 14 years when I came. Your experience, it's a very important thing. And I think that the Notre Dame has selected a very good coach. What does he have to do, Era, right away? Well, I would think in spring practice, he's going to evaluate the personnel and align it. That's what I've always talked about. You have to see what you have. It's X amount of ability. That ability has to be placed in the proper spot. You can't expect a guy or place a guy in a job that he's not capable of doing. And that's what I'm sure Lou Holtz and the staff that he selects will be very much in, uh, involved in in spring practice to make a determination on where these guys fit best. All right, Eric, you know, there's been a question about Ted Tolner out of USC and Pat Hayden standing by in New York. Pat, what about Tolner's future? Will he be back as the Trojan coach? Yes, Brett, I think he will be back uh, next year. As you know, they won last night against Oregon 20-6. to But he was spoken to after they lost to California, a surprise loss to California, a disappointing loss to Washington. But the wins, I think, over UCLA and Oregon have saved him at least for another year. All right. Thank Br you. Brent, Pat, when we come back, we'll have some final thoughts as the Prudential College Football Report continues here on CBS right after this. Some investors who thought oil was the only answer came up dry. They've seen that tying up all their money in banks isn't always in their best interest. And that following the takeover fad of the moment can lead to slim pickings. More and more, the ambitious investor is following Prudential Bates, whose rock-solid investment strategy is leading the way to the future. Prudential Bates Securities. Follow a leader. Find the holes in your homeowner's insurance before they find you. Sorry to barge in. Have a Prudential representative give you a fast, free, pro review of your coverage. Are we covered? For this? If you had a pro review, you'd know. Get a pro review from the Prudential and get a piece of the rock. Don't look like Bermuda to me. We're almost ready for the second half of Miami and Notre Dame, but once again, the first part of our CBS Sports doubleheader today, basketball, two of the top-ranked teams, Michigan and Georgia Tech met, Michigan a winner, 49-44. to I'd also like to say that this is the final studio scoreboard show here from New York. There will be, of course, more football coming your way, Army, Navy next week, and all the postseason bowl action, but we would like to thank everyone involved in making this show what it was this year, our first experience together in the studio, Pat, and it was a real pleasure working with you. Well, I've had some fun. I've got the greatest job of all. I get to watch seven games on Saturday afternoons without my wife asking me to take out the trash. <laughs> and not until at least next Saturday anyway. The second half is coming up next here on CBS, but first, Pat and I want to acknowledge everyone who made it possible to bring you the College Football Report each Saturday here on CBS. Our thanks to them and our thanks to you for a special year.
Prudential College Football Report has been sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and financial services. The Prudential, the rock. It's strong. It's on the move. It's bigger than life. Good afternoon. I'm Deborah Snell with a Channel 9 News break. High water is already closing off a number of tri-state roads today, one day before the Ohio River hits flood stage. Businesses along the river had to take quick action to avoid being shut down by the rising water. The Ohio will hit flood stage early tomorrow morning and is expected to crest Monday afternoon. Tri-state stores were flooded with shoppers yesterday and that trend continued today. We're told many merchants in, were keeping longer hours and running more specials to lure in shoppers, trying to make up for an unusually short Christmas shopping season this year. In sports, the Cape Crusaders brought home a state championship today, knocking off the St. Thomas Aquinas 27 to zip in the Ohio Division IV football final. In the forecast, a chance of rain tonight with a low of 45 degrees. Tomorrow high around 58 with two inches of rain expected. Details tonight at 11 on the Weekend Report. Join us then. From Miami, how come Miami missed you? Well, as I started um, choosing my schools and um, they had stopped talking to me for a while, and I had, when they came back to start by talking to me, I had um, already made it my five visits. We got, Brent, I got to show you something. Put your hat on there. Let's see what this hat says. It says Lorenzo White for the Hyphen. And I'm sure he's going to be on everybody's list next year. We look at that hat right there. And the sun is setting in Miami. And it's also setting on Notre Dame. And we'll be back with the second half after this. When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT, with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater, all to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM personal computer AT for advanced technology. Napa means auto parts. So dependable, they may be the best part of your car. More than 100,000 parts for import and domestic vehicles are available through over 6,500 Napa stores all across the country. Or get Napa quality at garages and service outlets where you see the Napa sign. Wherever you go, Napa's the one. All the right parts in all the right places. Napa. Yeah, Murph 76 versus Bob's Gas, and tonight belongs to Bob. See you, Bob. You hear that 76 gasolines have been improved? Improved how? Got an additive that helps keep carburetors cleaner. You know, Bob, at 76, people pay the same price, cash or credit. Yeah, well, at least we don't have a girl on our team, huh? Oh, with the spirit... No, you don't have that either, Bob. The spirit of 76. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this message from your local station. This is CBS. Fix it up. Tune it up. Take the road to Nationwide. Because when it comes to quality selection and low prices, Nationwide owns the road. Beat winter cold with a dependable Nationwide battery. 60-month batteries just $44.88 after rebate. 40, 50, and 72-month batteries also at great prices. Team up with Nationwide for low prices and good advice. Together. This commercial is recorded in stereo. Does your TV have what it takes to hear it? Now Zenith introduces the smart sets with television stereo sound built in. So all you have to do to hear this in stereo is this. Zenith, the smart sets, smarter than ever. Zenith smart set stereos can be seen and heard at Aurora TV in Aurora, Brock Furniture Covington, and at Bunker TV and Appliance in Cincinnati. Sports of all sorts, Sunday night at 11.30. Can Jerry Faust improve on what has been a troublesome statistic through his five-year career at Notre Dame? And I must remind everyone that the Hurricanes are one of the tougher teams in the country in the second half. Colorado State kicked a field goal against them. 
Maryland scored nine points. Florida State got only a field goal. Louisville a touchdown. Oklahoma scored a lone touchdown. Cincinnati was shut out. East Carolina kicked a field goal. Boston College got a touchdown. And Rice got all of 10 points. And that's been it. You can sell them and get more than the 10. Alan Pinkett is deep and set to return. Along with Miller, who is at the goal line, coming out. There's a penalty marker down. Miller is out of bounds on the far side at the 21-yard line, but there is a penalty flag. Coach? Yeah, it was, <clears throat> excuse me. It was clear away from the ball. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul. No, a holding penalty. Oh, it was way away from the ball, as far away as you can get. Let's take a look at how the Hurricanes fared with their possessions in the first half. They opened up with a field goal, came right back with a touchdown, then a field goal and a touchdown. Now that's what they did in the first half. So the Irish will have bad field position to start here as Jimmy Johnson gets ready to take his team on to the Sugar Bowl. And Steve Burline has returned as the Notre Dame quarterback. And on his first play, he hands off to Pinkett, who busts out across the 15-yard line. And Derwin Jones bringing him down. We can take a look at what Pinkett did here in the first half, Coach. Well, it's a little better than his average. His best day against Miami has been 58 yards and 15 carries. He just has not had good days against Miami. But when he gains over 100 yards, the Irish win a big percentage of the time. So he'd have to have a way over second half to bail him out of this one. It is second and four for Berline and the Irish attack. Stams and Pinkett off the play fake. Berline to throw deep down the middle, and it is complete at midfield. <laughs> So Reggie Ward with the completion and Bain hauls him down a 34 yard gain and a great strike right here by Berline he puts it right there to Ward you can see he's open and before you can get coverage by Bain number 18 the reception is made Berline's best pass of the afternoon Andrew Zach replacing him and he led the Irish to their lone touchdown Notre Dame coming back and here's Pinkett he is down there at the 50, Bruce Fleming, number 58. Looked like it was a little slow developing that time. A little misdirection play, faking the sweep to the wide side of the field and then slipping the ball to Pinkett, but it just was too long for the blockers to hold. So the sun setting here on Miami. Lights starting to twinkle. And the lights have been on for some time in the Orange Bowl. Tim Brown will split out to the right. It's second and nine for the Irish, and here's Pinkett. Inside the 35-yard line, Benny Blades, number 36, tackling him. And Notre Dame on the move here to start the second half with a 16-yard game. Watch the left guard right here, and watch the opening come right with Pinkett just popping it right through there. There he traps right across the hole. Look at the hole that Pinkett has. First and ten. The ball is at the 34. Brown in motion. Here is Pinkett, and he is stacked up on the right side. The Hurricane defensive front, and they are led, of course, by Jerome Brown, John McVay, Danny Stubbs, and Kevin Fagan here this afternoon. There is an injured player down, and that is Victor Morris. Now, that could become a problem for the Canes. Winston Moss, who started at that linebacking spot, has already been knocked out for the afternoon. And now his replacement, Morris, is down. Fleming coming over to the sideline to check with the defensive coaches. So while there's an injured player on the field, let's take a break here from Miami. 
looking for something more in a car, but the cost of keeping it on the road hangs over it like a dark cloud? Introducing a ray of sunshine, the 1986 Toyota Tercel. It has the lowest operating cost of any car in America. It's Toyota's lowest priced car. It has more room than any subcompact and front wheel drive. The Toyota Tercel, you won't get soaked. To Jim Peck, who had five business lunches in three days, Republic Airlines awards the comforts of perks. I've earned them. To Denise Cresta, who had to preview 400 patterns of plaid, Republic awards the executive suite perk. I've earned it. And to Ron Barry, who had to be in three cities at the same time, Republic awards a free trip after only 20,000 miles. He's earned it. We make you feel like flying. It is a game for pride and for honor. The 86th Annual Army-Navy Game, next Saturday on CBS Sports. Let's go downstairs now to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Thank you, Brent. The Dean of Sports Information Directors at all the land is Roger Valdeseri from Notre Dame. His son, Ken Valdeseri, has a real tough job this year. He's a public relations man for the Chicago Bears. Did you teach him anything, Roger? I, I learned from him, Pat, really. He's, uh, he's doing a great job, and I, uh, I can take notes from him. The Bears are here on Monday night on another network, shall we say. Let's get some business out of the way, though. Can Jim McMahon play? He's available, Pat. He practiced this week, and uh, he's going to be available to play. It's just hopeful that uh, he doesn't have any more tenderness in his shoulder area. Must be pretty tough trying to hype the Bears this season, huh? No, it's been very difficult. Brian Harlan and I have been very busy, and uh, we've enjoyed the year, though. All right, back to you, Brent. All right, Pat, thank you. Roger Valdesari may lead the country in friends. Here is second down, Burline, with a penalty marker thrown. He hits Pinkett, who steps out at the 25-yard line. But there was a penalty flag down on the far side of the field, Coach. Couldn't quite tell who was the culprit that time. Let's see what he says. Holding. Whoops. Ten-yarder. It's one on the kickoff. Now on this drive, and this is sort of the history of Notre Dame during the years. They get a drive going. They've been victims of their own errors. There's another example of it. The times when they come down the field, they have a successful play, and it's called back. It happened in the LSU game. So after the opening weekend of play in NCAA college basketball, there will be a new number one. There's Michigan here earlier this afternoon on CBS. Down to Georgia Tech, 49 to 44. And of course, number one in college basketball is decided on the court, and in college football, it's decided at the voting booth. And there are still a handful of teams arguing for that number one spot. Penn State obviously in control, but the Hurricanes could be a factor before it's over. Now Berline pulls out. Drops off the screen to Pinkett. Gets to the 34-yard line. He had to get down to the 24-yard line for a first down. And again, George Myra Jr., number 45, getting up from that pile. Bruce Fleming was in there to help also. He missed a lot of the season with an injury. He was a starter a year ago and had uh, an injury that kept him out. These are also their long snapper. You know they had a lot of trouble in that Maryland game with their punt snaps as well as their field goal and extra point snaps. But so far they've been pretty good. They've made the corrections that were necessary in the last two or three weeks. Berline bringing the average to the line of scrimmage at third and 11. To the right, and it is complete. Inside the 20-yard line, and Reggie Ward again, the target of Burline's pass. Good throw by Burline. It was right there. Myra couldn't get over there. Here's the shot from the end zone. You see Burline putting it right in there. Good throw. He's having a good drive. This is the most impressive he has been this afternoon. Now the ball is at the 18-yard line. It will be first and 10. We talk so much about Vinny Testaverde and the Miami offense. Era, I think we neglect what has become a very acceptable defensive unit here under Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, and you can see Jimmy was complaining from the sideline. I'm not sure exactly what it was to the official. Whether he felt someone, some infraction had occurred that hadn't been called. In any event, the official did not uh, give him any satisfaction. Tim Brown 
sets in a wing and comes in motion behind Burline on the left side of the offensive line. Beat the snap count. That's Jim Higgins, the one of the line coaches, the offensive line coach. He feels that the noise created the the offside penalty because you can see the offensive line on the left side break loose because of the new the noise. He's way out on the field now. Now they're talking to the umpire to see whether or not there was a distraction by the defense. No, they're going to penalize Notre Dame on it. The ball starts, offense, first down. Watch the left side break before the snap. Right there, just firing out. The tight end and the left tackle, which is the strong tackle, Perino and Raider. So it's first and 15. And another Irish mistake has them in the hole. And this is Pinkett. Hole on the left side. Squirts to the 16-yard line. Well, you see, Brent, how quick he read that to the outside. The hole was designed to go over the left guard with a lead block, an isolation block, with a fullback leading. Pinkett just took that ball, saw there was nothing there, and just bounced it right to the outside. You know, Aaron, that's his best day ever against Miami. Absolutely, by a number of yards. And as I say, the Irish are always tough. Anytime he gets 100, and he's well on his way to that with 11 minutes left to go in this third period. And Aaron, no back has hit Miami for 100 yards this year. It is second and eight. A touchdown here, and the Irish should get right back in it. Pinkett to the 13-yard line, and that was Fagan, 95. Great job by Kevin Fagan coming back. There was a big hole there. He rolled off the block, came back to the inside. He saved that from being a big gainer. Our coach, third and six. Uh, would you put it up here? Well, I think I would. I think it's an area where you've got to go to the passing game. You've got the complimentary plays, which are screens and draws. But I certainly I think he's got I think Berline's got to throw it here. Francisco is in the backfield. They'll run Francisco, and he gets nowhere. I, said, uh, I think maybe we should throw the ball. <laughs> I got the message loud and clear. And after seeing that, I would have to agree. And guess who comes in there but big Jerome Brown. Watch him come in here. They're trying a little tackle trap here. Hand the ball back to Hiawatha. And right there, number 98, Jerome Brown, a really a great football player. He moves like an NFL defensive lineman. This is fourth and nine. Burline incomplete. The Canes take over. Just overthrew it a little bit. The receiver Raider, number 90, was open by a very small margin and had to be dropped in there perfectly. And Burline overthrew it. Here it is from the end zone. Makes the fake off to the right side. There he lofts the ball up, and you see Raider just overthrown. Actually, if he'd have put it in there, that ball would have been a first down. 9-33. The Canes leading the Irish. 27-7 is our count here in the Orange Bowl. Vinny Testaverde with Highsmith and Williams is running back. And here is Highsmith, number 30, running in the middle of that Irish defense. And for Janik, 58 led the assault against him defensively. This is a tight end, number 90, Raider. You'll watch him cross here, and this is where Burline overthrows the ball as they fake off tackle. Take a look at it. You see him cross. He is open. If it's a perfectly thrown ball, Burline just overthrows it right there. Otherwise, it could have been in the game. And Testaverde comes right back and hits Irvin. And Spence the coverage. And it's another first down for Miami. 8.52 to go here in the third. Testaverde, 14 of 21 for 197 yards and one touchdown on the afternoon. Well, he's on his way to his average over 300 yards a game. No one else has been able to stop this fella. And I certainly would hate to have to defense him on tight. You'll 
put it up on first down. That's complete. And that was Williams who'd come out of the backfield into that secondary. And they pick up another seven yards. See how well he read the coverage that time? The deep receivers were covered and the out people. He just takes what he's got. He's willing to take that five and six yarder of the possession type passes if it's there. If it's not, he'll hit the deeper passes. He really reads well, has good vision. He looks off the defenders very well. It's hard to get a jump on the ball because he's looking away from it. Four-man rush, and they break through. Dorsey coming, has Testaverde. There's a penalty marker down, however. That is the third sack of the game, and we will await to see what the penalty was in that situation. The hand is closed. It's a 10-yard penalty. The other, when the hand is open when he signals, it's an illegal use of the hands, and that's a 10-yarder right there. Let's see whether or not they take the down. Which is a sack and a loss because you see Jerry saying no, don't take the penalty, take the down. And they have declined it indeed, just as Coach Faust signaled from the sideline. And so it will be third down and 12 yards to go for the first down. And there is always the tight end, if all else fails, when you have to defend Miami. Testaverde drops back. Straight over the middle to Willie Smith, and there's your first down. It's what like a, automatic. What a throw that was. Off his back foot, retreating, and throws a strike just absolutely perfect. Willie well, Smith, the tight end, with 19 more yards. Watch this from the end zone here. You'll see Smith crossing right across the screen right there. Look at him put the ball right there in Smith's hands. Lawrence, number 23, cannot stay up with him. Testaverde threw that off balance, backing away with a pretty good rush on him. And era, they've got quality running backs, too. On first down, you are left guessing as the play is stopped by one of the officials. Coming up to confer with the referee at the 7 11 mark here in the third quarter. Testaverde now listening in on their discussion. Team on the sideline. If we take a moment to fix it. I think that's the first time we've had a stoppage of play for a broken chain, Mr. Yeah, Parsons. Right. Well, the way they've been moving it up and down the field, both teams here, since the second quarter, why they're going to need that first down marker. Better get a strong chain before <laughs> William Perry and his friends come stepping oh, on Monday yeah. night, too. Can you believe that the Miami Herald has a little box that you call and you give Don Shula an idea of how you would stop the Bears, what you would do? <laughs> <laughs> first and ten. Just a birdie. Off the fake, and here's Perriman. And that's a fake to him, and Testaverde standing in. Gordon Durbin for the home run. Incomplete in the end zone. Wilson was covering on the play. He faked everybody in the ballpark that time. And he hit that ball right on his right hip. What? Take a look here. How, what a great job. Well, I guess we got the shot of the receiver coming down the field. He is open. Lawrence number, or rather Troy Wilson number 12 jumps on him. But you see how open Irwin is. But uh, Testaverde was flushed out to the left. He still puts the ball right in his hands there. He could have caught the ball. You bet he could have caught the ball. He has Wilson beat by a couple of steps, circling back under it, and he can't hold on. We got a timeout in the Orange Bowl. Now there's something that gives a higher return on your investment than stocks, or bonds, or CDs or treasuries. The Sylvania Super Saver Fluorescent. When you figure what this premium light saves your company in energy over an ordinary fluorescent, you're getting a return on your additional investment of 173% a year. G. No, GTE. Hold on tight, let it flow.
makes a complete line of ATVs for doing all kinds of things, especially having all kinds of fun. Honda ATV gets you where the fun is. I'm going to give you a choice. A fabulous dinner with me or a million dollars. Of course, this isn't just my generosity. It's part of Canada Dry's million dollar sweepstakes. I adore Canada Dry ginger ale. It's deliciously less sweet. And who wants to be sweet, anyway? So have a Canada Dry ginger ale while you're mulling over this momentous decision. Me, or a million dollars. For details, see the Canada Dry Joan Cullen sweepstakes display in supermarkets. Well, left guard Dave Alekna was injured on that play. Wally Klein, 96, coming in here. He has the pressure on Testaverde. He rolls away and accidentally rolls up the back of Alekna's leg, and that resulted in the injury. Let's go down to the field now to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Brent, we found somebody down here with a button on that says number 20. It's a picture of Helen Pinkett, and who might it be but Maggie Pinkett? We'll talk to her in a little bit. Let's go to Brent. All right, Pat. We'll come right back to you after this play. Second and 10. Testaverde. Flushed under pressure. You see him step away from two tacklers, break another one. Now he's over the 40-yard line, and he is finally tripped up by Haywood, number one. What a brilliant run that was. Well, he convinced me a few weeks ago when we saw him in the Maryland game, and <clears throat> thus far in this ball game, you know he can throw the ball. Now this convinces you that he can scramble and run with it. He's strong. He's six foot five, 218 pounds, scrambles well, sees well, and he also runs well. Look at him shake tacklers in there. Break clear across the field and run the ball out of bounds after picking up a first down. Finally, Haywood right there trips him up as he goes out of bounds. And there is an Irish player injured, Matt Dengens. And while we've got an opportunity, let's return to Pat and Mrs. Pinkett. Pat? All right, thank you, Brent. Part two. Uh, Maggie, you must be very proud of Al. Yes, I am very proud of Al. I'm glad to be here with him today. We got more friends down here on the sideline than Roger Valdeseri, the SID. Everybody's saying hello to Maggie. Alan's sister here, Carolyn Yates, is here. When you were growing up, did you think Alan would be this spectacular in football? No, we had no idea. We knew he'd accomplish anything he set out to accomplish, but we had no idea it would be this great. How important was Alan's education to you, Mrs. Pinkett? Oh, it was very important. More important than football. Really? Yes, definitely. Now we know why Alan Pinkett is such a fine young gentleman that comes from such a fine family. You want to say hello to Isaiah, right? Papa Pinkett sitting at home. Let's say hi to him and go back to Brent. All right, first and 10 for Miami on the handoff. Highsmith down to the 30-yard line. He picks up three more yards here at the 6.20 mark in the third quarter. Dorsey and Bob Martz in to make that stop. You know, Brent, <clears throat> the... Uh... The score is a little lopsided with 27 to 7, but the total yards prior to that last play is not that uh, much difference. 260 yards, 69 yards for Notre Dame, and just 293 for Miami. But that interception, the big interception, was the key. On second down, Testaverde will put it up. Throws to Blades, incomplete, and it'll be third down. They had Irvin and Blades both on the right side. Irvin going deep into the end zone, and Blades curled back outside toward the sideline and Testaverde underthrew him that time. 5.48 to go and Alabama is still ahead of Auburn by six. They've gone to the fourth and Auburn, of course, headed for the Cotton Bowl. And Bo Jackson, of course, everyone expects headed for the Heisman Trophy, which will be announced next week. In with good time. Throws to Irvin, who cannot hold on. May have overled him just a bit, but Irvin thinks he should have had it. Spence had the coverage for the Irish that time. Put the double flanker. Watch the inside of the two flankers. Number 47, Irwin, comes down the field. He's got single coverage right there by Spence. Breaks to the outside, and the ball is just slightly overthrown by... Would have taken a heck of an effort there by Irvin to get it. Cox will now attempt a 48-yard field goal. He has hit 39 and 47 on the day for the Canes. It's on its way, and he's got his third field goal, and that ties his career long. Cox 
Fox nails a 48 yarder. It is 37 and we'll be right back. In a high tech fighter, avionics like these are your eyes. In your car, this eye tells you the all weather Delco Freedom battery is raring to go. One glance is all the maintenance it takes in any weather, from the blazing desert heat to flash frozen with sub zero liquid gas. You'll see why Delco is the world's largest producer of maintenance free batteries. From $39.95 for a Series 40, call 800 AC Delco. Never wait for trouble. Unwrap some terrific gift ideas from True Value Hardware Stores, like the Black & Decker automatic shut-off iron. The temperature lights help prevent scorching, and it turns itself off if you forget. Then impress your guests with the perfect opening every time from the Norelco electric corkscrew. And even an amateur chef can shred and chop like a pro with the compact Oscar food processor from Sunbeam. Wrap up your holiday shopping at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Toyota, who reminds you to get more from life. Buckle up, who could ask for anything more? GTE, we can do business with your business. And by Honda All-Terrain Vehicles. Honda, follow the leader. Penn State, now. Miami and Oklahoma, your national champion is almost certain to come from one of those four teams this year. Miami, of course, with a strong argument if it comes down to them against Oklahoma because they went into Norman and beat the Sooners. However, the Sooners were injured on that afternoon, and the coaches, at least, think that Oklahoma is stronger than Miami. I'm not convinced there in watching this Miami team. I think they're as good as any team in the land right now. And the Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department and faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. Today's winners are Alan Pinkett of Notre Dame and Daniel Stubbs of Miami. And Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. 5.36 to go in the third. It's 30 to 7. The Canes dominating the Irish. Terry Anderson has returned at quarterback. Pinkett battling his way out to the 24-yard line. Eric, what are your thoughts about the national championship this year? Well, it's very similar to the year that uh, Miami did get the championship when they were ranked fifth, but you got to have all the chips fall right. And it could very well happen. I think, you know, the, the Orange Bowl will host Oklahoma and Penn State. Penn State's undefeated. Of course, Iowa with UCLA. And Miami would have to beat Tennessee. You have to have all the chips fall in the right place to have it happen. Irish need some chips to fall in the right place immediately. And here comes Pinkett again. And this time, that Miami defensive front is ready to go to work. Led by number 86, Derwin Jones. third down play and it's being brought in from the sideline wide receiver delivers it to Andrzak he marched Notre Dame to its only touchdown he has Stams set in front of Pinkett he'll throw incomplete through behind Brown so we are live at the Orange Bowl in Miami Musburger along with Aero Parsegal. The sun has set and it is setting on Notre Dame and of course Jerry Faust in his last game as head coach of the Irish and they are being dominated here this afternoon. If there was a key play against Faust in the Irish it was an interception of a Berline pass by Blades who ran it back 61 yards for a touchdown. Sorensen punted. Perriman set to return for the Canes at the 39. Cuts back and tries to get outside, and the Irish tackle it there. Troy Wilson coming down. A 35-yard punt, and no yards on the return. And there is a flag down on the field right now. They are conferring. Looks like clipping. So 
they'll march off the penalty and we will come back with Benny Testaverde in a moment. Watching an adventure movie on a VCR? Terrific. But you're only hearing half the fun until you hear Zenith's Hi-Fi Stereo VCR. The stereo sounds so real. It's like being there. You can even tune in and record stereo TV broadcasts. Zenith's VHS Hi-Fi Stereo VCR. Look out! Big sand, old boy. One of the smart VCRs. Zenith, smarter than ever. When you're looking for more in a car, reach for the stars. Introducing the all-new 1986 Toyota Celica GTS, totally redesigned to give you more. A front-wheel drive car that truly handles like a sports car. Let the electronically fuel-injected 16-valve twin cam dazzle you. Let its 135 horsepower move you. The Toyota Celica, a star is born more like a legend. It's a matchup of super sophomores. Danny Manning will lead Kansas against Chris Washburn and NC State in NCAA basketball next Saturday on CBS Sports. Here this afternoon, Vinny Testaverde and Miami have scored on five of their six possessions. The only time they didn't score was when time ran out in the half. 4.02 to go in the third quarter, and on first down, they'll run Williams, who breaks free, fumble, just back on the ball at the 35-yard line. The ball came back to him. He's very fortunate. Yeah, those two fine wide receivers of Johnson, Blades and Irvin, would you like to have a freshman receiver as good as Irvin? And a junior quarterback as talented as Testaverde, and an entire offensive line returning, and all four of your running backs, and ten of your defense. <laughs> Off the fake, Testaverde throws to Highsmith, who is wide open. And he comes across the 40-yard line, down to the 36. Figaro, number 48, pulls him down. That's a 28-yard gain, and Highsmith is one of those four running backs who will be back. The fake, the fake inside held the defense. No one was in the flat to take the coverage as you'll watch Highsmith break from his fullback position. Testaverde fakes to the inside. Look at him wide open here in the flat. No one there to take that area. He's surprised when he gets him. He says, hey, I can run a little bit here. And he takes off with the football until Figueroa right there from the rear brings him down. They'll run Highsmith into the middle of that defense. And Johnson and the Canes would go to work on the clock right now, you would think. They're dominating the scoreboard. 37. They've run it down to about 250 to go in the third. Well, I feel that they were a little bit one-sided. I recall talking with Gary Stevens. They felt that they wanted to, they knew they could run the football, but they had been relying on the pass, pass, pass. And they went into that uh, Maryland game and decided they wanted to run a little bit more. And uh, I imagine they'll keep it on the ground some here. They show a wing formation this time, and Testaverde says, I'm not keeping it on the ground at all. And he just throws a completion out there to Willie Smith at the 20-yard line, and that's another first down and 12 more yards. Here's a ground-level view. There's number 71, Dorsey, being blocked by Ed Davis, number 70. Does a great job. And, of course, Testaverde puts it right down there for Smith. Great job. There's number 71, Dorsey. Watch him block here by Davis. Or rather, O'Connor, that's 77. They cannot get any pressure on Testaverde. Now, Williams slanting off the right side, and he is inside the 15-yard line. Ballage, number 40, met him right there. You recall, Brent, the time that uh, they did get pressure on Testaverde, they did get a couple sacks on him, but he scrambled out and made all kinds of yardage running with the football. Second down and five. Irvin, flank to the left. Testaverde throwing and all alone. 
was feeling no pressure at all. Aaron he was standing in the end zone. <laughs> They're an awesome offensive football team. from the end zone looking at it from a defensive view watch Testaverde finds him he splits the de zone defenders right between them all no one can get there and Irwin Irvin has caught another touchdown pass that's nine on the year for the freshman and that ties Miami's single season reception record and of course Eddie Brown did that last year Cox hits the extra point and they run it up to 37 7 and uh, era this is getting embarrassing for Notre Dame well, it is. It's been a tough year, and I'm sure that they're resolved with all the things that happened during the course of the week. It's, they've been so close in some of these games. I was looking at the stats, Brent. You know, you recall the opening game that we did with Michigan, Notre Dame. That was a 20 to 12 game, and they were leading in that game until they had the unfortunate injury to Alonzo Jefferson. They lost last week to by three points to LSU, and then of course the Air Force game they could have won. You know, uh, Jimmy Johnson, I mentioned, is a strong candidate for Coach of the Year, in my opinion. And we asked him about that. Well, uh, you know, of course, uh, being named Coach of the Year uh, uh, was a great honor for me, and, and it's a great honor for our program and, and what they've accomplished this year, especially uh, with only having one senior starting for our football team. Uh, but I think what we have done here is, is we have uh, found uh, something that we really enjoy, that we really like. Uh, all coaching is a pressure situation. You have a lot of movement in the coaching profession, uh, but we tried to eliminate some of that. We signed a contract a few weeks ago, and we said, uh, don't call us. Uh, we're not interested, uh, and besides that, we don't want to be tempted. Uh, we love it here in Miami. Now, we can see why this afternoon. I want to follow up on that story in just a moment, but first, the kickoff to the Irish right now. Miller with the return. He comes out to the 20-yard line where the Irish will put the ball in play. Now, I was told that the University of Pittsburgh inquired about Jimmy Johnson earlier in the week to see if he was available and wanted to replace Foz Fazio, who was released. And, of course, you heard Johnson's response that he has told people that he is happy down here at Miami and he is content to stay. I have also been told that Oklahoma State's fine coach, Pat Jones, had been approached by Pittsburgh and that they had sought permission to speak to him and we'll see what happens with that situation. Now, Andrzak pulling back and it is complete to the 47-yard line. Selwyn Brown making the hit right now on Francisco who released from the backfield a 26-yard gain for the Irish. First and 10. will be in Philadelphia next week, 2.30 Eastern time. Army-Navy, one of those annual games. Andrew Zach over the middle, overthrown and almost intercepted by Blades again. That is tight end to Raider, and the ball was up over his head and in and out of Blades' hand. You know, going back to Jimmy Johnson, Brent, a year ago, <laughs> tail end of the season, he lost three games, which included the Boston College, Maryland, and after having led, led Maryland 31 to nothing at halftime, and then the UCLA game, he scored over 40 points in each game and still lost those games. So he's got a couple coming to him, I guess. Second and ten. And on the quick bolt by Hiawatha Francisco to the 46-yard line, George Myra Jr. Inside of a minute left here in the quarter, number three. Hiawatha's looked pretty good here this afternoon and evening. Coming into the game, he had carried 52 times for 219 yards as a backup to Alan Pinkett. That's a 4.2 average, not too bad. Here's third down for Andrew Second, the Irish. And that time he dropped it. Francisco turned and looked upfield, and that's just about how it's gone for much of five years for Coach Faust. Well, I look down at the stats again, and Hiawatha just caught one pass for five yards. <laughs> so sometimes those stats mean something. Fourth down, the punting team in for Notre Dame. 
Miami leading Notre Dame by 30 points, 37 to 7, and 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. High punt, Perriman getting out of the way after signaling fair catch, and the ball goes into the end zone for a touchback. It'll come out on the 20. That's a 46 yard punt. But then he loses 20 of that when it comes out on the touchback. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Manage. To handle or direct with skill. Rockwell International Management stimulates the work of its 120,000 employees. One in six a scientist or engineer. Their elegant solutions to customer needs make Rockwell a world leader. Rockwell International. Managing high technology for global markets. This imported beer is all that you'd expect. It has a rich, full-bodied, imported flavor, as you'd expect. And a deep, golden color to match its quality taste, as you'd expect. But here's one thing you probably won't expect. It's light. Amstel Light Beer. 95 calories, never tasted so imported. Amstel Light Beer, imported by Van Munching & Company, New York. This is CBS. Coors, in cooperation with WUBE and the Red Carpet Inn, brings you the first annual Tough Man Contest at Cincinnati Gardens, Friday and Saturday, December 13th and 14th at 8 p.m. See 50 area sluggers battle it out for $3,000 in cash and an all-new Tough Woman Contest, too. To enter, call 244-8801. Tickets at Cincinnati Gardens and all Ticketron outlets, $10 ringside, $8 reserved. The Tough Man, Tough Woman Contest, Friday and Saturday, December 13th and 14th, Cincinnati Gardens. How tough are you? It's Suzuki Quadramania time at your participating Suzuki dealers, and it's time to make a free wheel and deal on any one of Suzuki's eight magnificent quads. Price to sell during Quadramania. Come on in, take a free demonstration ride on any of the 1986 quad runners. Purchase one of Suzuki's eight distinctively different quads during Quadramania and get special factory incentives. Financing is available. It's four wheel and fun for the whole family with Suzuki's quad runners at these participating Suzuki dealers. Suzuki foremost in four wheel and. See Kentucky versus Indiana next Saturday night at 8. 15 minutes of the Jerry Faust era about to begin. Miami dominating Notre Dame. Benny Testaverde pulling out. Going long. Has Paramount. And it's complete at the 35-yard line. Mike Haywood with the coverage and era. Jimmy Johnson is not calling off the dogs. Certainly isn't. Here it is. Testaverde just puts it right up there for Paramount. He beats Haywood, gets by him. You see right there, two or three steps, comes back for the ball. Haywood knocks him down. There's another big play. He may be big, making a pitch for that national championship. He is 20 of 30 for 324 yards. If I was a member of that Tennessee secondary, I'd be impressed, Coach. <laughs> I guess. Off a of fake, here comes Testaverde to the right. Now he throws back on the screen to Highsmith. Three blockers in front of him. Highsmith inside the 25-yard line. Another first down for Miami. What an impressive offensive display this is. Now, while you're watching the action, we'll take a look at some scores, too. We'll flash them up for you. Of course, Thursday night, the Texas A&M won its way into the Cotton Bowl in impressive fashion. And that was the game on CBS yesterday. Here, of course, we're down to the final quarter. And it's 37-7. Sands of time are running out on Jerry Faust. Lou Holtz will take over the Notre Dame program next year. Holtz is with his family out in Palm Springs, California, over this Thanksgiving Day weekend. And I imagine he has been watching with interest. And Era, I know that both you and I certainly want to wish him the best of luck. I thought he did a magnificent job at Minnesota. And that is a job that I think has a great future because of the facility they built up there in Minneapolis. Well, they have a tremendous facility up there. On first down, Williams comes to the 22-yard line. Yeah. 
to see Pinkett there. His last game as a senior. And of course, yesterday, as Steve Davis, as I was listening to the Maryland game, the analyst, of course, for CBS, was talking about one of the raps on Lou Holtz was that he wasn't recruiting well at uh, Arkansas. But I don't know how anybody can say that with what he did at Minnesota in a very short time. He did an outstanding job there. Well, Pinkett, 17 for 79 yards and one touchdown. Testaverde. Throwing over the middle to Smith. He hangs on, battles his way to the one yard line, and he is injured. That hand was cut badly in the early going of this game. That's a 21 yard gain, and he showed you why he is the All America tight end. Six catches today for 80 yards. The concentration he has on this, this very, the test very, ran out to the right for no reason. There was no rush, but there he finds Smith. He takes a couple of good shots there. He hangs on to that football. Ty Smith and Williams, the backs behind Testaverde in this first end goal. Testaverde keeping it, and then he'll just run into the end zone. Terribly unnecessary at this point in the game. He was already in the end zone. The first shot, there was nothing dirty about that, but the second one was really uncalled for. No need for that. Well, it's the expression of frustration of the season. I agree. It was certainly uncalled for as he just already makes a great fake to the inside. Decides to keep it, go into the end zone for the touchdown. Right there. That's a legitimate shot there by Wilson. And of course, Darcy puts another shot on him right there. Testaverde goes down, he's unhurt. Darcy headed over toward the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't uh, toss him out of the ball game. The extra point is good, the route is on. Miami 44, Notre Dame 7. both mean something great to these guys. Mount Hood means the best summer skiing in America. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place at Old Milwaukee Beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Man, it doesn't get any better than this. Who gives you more for less? Toyota is who? Chrome front bumper. Split bench seat. AM, FM, stereo, and cassette. Buy any of these new Toyota trucks and you can get up to $1,000 worth of added features for only $399. So get more for less and save up to $630. Look for the more for less sticker at your Toyota dealer and get more for less. Who could ask for anything more Toyota? On the NFL Today, Jim Brown live. A conversation with Walter Payton and Joe Montana reflects on his toughest season. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. Well, we are back in the Orange Bowl with 12 minutes and 50 seconds to go. And I'll tell you, man, who's happy, and that is Captain Don Bozanek up there piloting the Goodyear blimp today. The one time linebacker here with the Hurricanes. The penalty has just been marked off against Notre Dame. So Seelig will tee the ball up there at the Irish 45. <laughs> He'll knock this one clear out of the Orange Bowl. He kicks him into the end zone without the 15 yard advantage. Miller awaiting the kickoff along with Brown. Short kick and a fair catch at the 12 yard line. And Errol, let's take a look at that tight end play there. Watch Willie Smith right here. I've circled him. He'll come off the line here and, and curl hook. And of course, Testaverde rolls out. He spins off and goes down for the reception. Watch here. You see him release off the line. He's looking for the ball. Now he feels the pressure of the coverage right there, right here. And he'll spin off and come down for the catch. 
and get away from the defender. Great piece of work by Smith. Andrzak back to throw on first down, overthrows the receiver, and it'll be second down for Notre Dame at the 12:44 mark. Here I'm somewhat surprised that Jimmy Johnson didn't call off the offense that time. I think he's got the game in hand. Uh, one thing, he doesn't have to take on Lou Holtz next year. So there'll be no chance for Kitty even next season. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. Of course, that's, uh, I, would, I would have thought he'd run some of the time off the clock by keeping it on the ground some. Here's the handoff inside. And that was Hiawatha Francisco, who played, of course, at Moeller High School and was recruited there by Jerry Faust before Faust brought him to Notre Dame. And when the season began, of course, he was in the defensive secondary of Notre Dame. And then, if you were watching, when they opened the year against Michigan, the backup tailback, Alonzo Jefferson, suffered a knee injury that eliminated him for the year. And that's when they brought Francisco from the defense to the offense. Third and six. 12.08. Brown comes in motion. Inside handoff. And that's good for a first down. And again, it was Francisco. And I want to remind everybody that tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time, Dick Vermeil will be live in the studio. He'll have his story on Joe Montana and some of the problems he's encountered this year. And also, Jim Brown will be in live in the studio. I'll talk to him, and then I'll talk live to Walter Payton before they leave to come down here to Miami and their confrontation with the Dolphins on Monday night. 11.40 to go, fourth quarter. Andrzak, with time, throws it complete. And another Notre Dame first down. Out to the 38-yard line, Joe Williams, back up tight end. You no know, speculation in guessing what Lou Holtz might do. I would think after he evaluates the quarterbacks, he would settle in on, say, just one of these two or somebody else, whoever may be available to him. Uh, freshmen are still eligible, and there's a couple of other fine quarterbacks on the team, including the fellow by the name of Dulles. But I always like to have one quarterback, get him in brain, get him experienced, and have him do the job. Here we have we have seen two quarterbacks. Both of them have done quite well, particularly Andrew Zach. And, uh, but I think Lou will settle in on one. Zach to throw. The rush comes through on him. Throws back across the field. Incomplete. And it will be second and ten. And Andrew Zach feeling the heat of that Miami rush that time. John McVay broke through and was pursuing Andrew Zach. Andrew Zach, 6 of 13 for 110 yards. And of course, Vinny Testaverde is the quarterback of the hour here in Miami. You imagine somebody stepping in and replacing Bernie Kosar as quickly as Testa Verde did this year? That's well, remarkable. On second down, and they run Francisco. And he picks up eight yards before Carter tackles him, number 91. Rodney made Rodney Carter, number 91 right there, made uh, Myra a better football player because they were in intense competition in the spring and early fall. And of course, the coaches were telling me that you get that kind of competition, you get the best out of these players. And certainly he added to that if he's had a great season. Third down. Andrew Zach will run Francisco, and he will be stopped short. Any test of Verde today era can become the all-time yardage quarterback against Notre Dame. Jim Everett was, and 368 is the target. I would think we'll see Jeff Toretta coming in here in the next series. But there he is. He's six foot two, 220, a junior. He's completed eight out of 12. We'll see what happens. Fourth down here. Oh. Miami's ball. See, 
they just get penetration and absolutely get no movement off the line of scrimmage. There's no chance to make the first down. And that's been one of the problems that Notre Dame has had through the years here on short yardage and goal line attack has been a real headache to them. They've not been able to make the crucial yardage. So Jeff Toretta, as you predicted, takes over. And Johnson has called it off at 44-7 and 9-36. Calls it off for one, but not the other one. And Perriman inside the 30-yard line. Well, he is 8 at 12. And he's thrown for a couple of touchdowns and one interception out of California. Like so many successful quarterbacks throughout the country, especially up in the Big Ten this year, we saw some. Well, I remember back in his pregame comments, he said, if we get him down, don't let him up. Well, they're down pretty good. Hands off to Bratton. Right ahead to the 23-yard line. Clock inside of nine minutes. It's 44 to 7. Miami leading Notre Dame. Dorsey, whom I speculated might have been tossed out of the game but wasn't, was actually taken out by Notre Dame and lectured to on the sideline for might a brief have... time by Faust. He jumped down there on the defensive side. Now I think there was movement by the Hurricanes. He was drawn offside. Once that offensive lineman establishes a three-point stance, watch right here the right tackle, the outside man, I believe, moves just before he does. No, by golly, Dar Darcy does move first. Well, those officials can't be right all the time. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, no, no. <laughs> Second down and ten, and they set the screen pass. And that leaves them third and short, and that was Todd Stanish, 46, who has checked in. He is the fifth running back being used. Dave Alekna, the offensive left guard of the Hurricanes, injured earlier in the game, watching from the sideline. Klein accidentally rolled up on that left leg. This is third and three. Here's Bratton bouncing outside, and he is short of the first down. Rick DiBernardo, number 43, with the stop. And it will be fourth and two. You can just feel the folks in Miami right now saying, Eric. Hey, the Bears are next, man. Let's get the Bears in there. You know, I can just feel it in this city right now. <laughs> so they try to pick up the first down and keep the massacre going here in the Orange Bowl. You can tell by the crowd's reaction. They're going to get four more downs. So here's first down for Toretta. Bratton and Stanish. Stanish out as a receiver. Throws back. Incomplete. Overled is intended receiver. And that was Andre Brown, number 83, a freshman wide out, and Brandy Wells with the coverage as Miami keeps chucking it in that end zone. I would think this would be a good time for Jimmy Johnson to show a little compassion here and just 
run the ball in. There's no question about the outcome with 44 points on the board. And even though the youngsters want to play well, I think that uh, keeping it on the ground, let them try to score that way because the this game's over with. 6.17 to go. Second and ten. Ready to throw it again. Over the middle. Touchdown, Miami. Andre Brown. Look at it from the end zone here. Toretta comes back, makes the fake to the inside to Bratton, number five. And, of course, there's the throw. Wide open in the end zone. And another score for the Hurricanes. Cox adds the extra point. And it is 51 to 7. Technology is taking over the world. You can keep up with it, or you're going to be left behind. That's why I joined the Army. From microchip circuitry to laser technology, the world's largest school for high-tech skills is the Army. Bravo, go active. Bravo, lock, zero five. Be all that you can be. I don't intend to get left behind. Find your future in the Army. Now, for the power computer user who demands performance, Radio Shack introduces the Tandy 3000, the more powerful and more affordable IBM PC AT compatible. Here's the power to manage your business, utilize computer networking, or create a multi-user system. The Tandy 3000, the power to put you in command. Tandy, clearly superior, in business for business, only at Radio Shack Computer Centers. Tonight, Uncle Sam's giving Richard Pryor the runaround. His wife's giving him the heave-ho, and the only woman who cares costs too much. Richard Pryor stars in Some Kind of Hero. We are back for the final 6-11. Miami thrashing Notre Dame here in the Orange Bowl, 51-7. Selig with the ball teed up. He'll kick it off. Mark Green and Alvin Miller are the deep backs for the Irish. Here's Green. 15 out to the 20 yard line. And a reminder that next week. CBS. We'll have Army Navy from Philadelphia live for you at 2:30 Eastern Time. Then a look at the bowl lineup: the Sun Bowl on Saturday, December 28th. That's 2:30 Eastern Time. The Peach Bowl. That's on Tuesday, December 31st at 2:30. And of course, the Cotton Bowl. Auburn and Texas A&M, 1:30 Eastern Time. The handoff is to Stams. The wrong team's passing. <laughs> Did I miss something in my football education? You got it right, boy. <laughs> well, we get word that Alabama has kicked a long field goal to beat Auburn with no time remaining. And our studio, I'm sure, will have that update. And Bo Jackson on the afternoon gains 142 yards and two touchdowns. So he certainly did his job. That's two years in a row. Perkins has beat that die. That's for the recruiting and the bragging rights to Alabama. Third and 12. Berline. 
incomplete intended for Miller. You know, with the score 51 to 7, you hate to pick out one play as a key play. But if there was one, it was this one. Berline wanted Pinkett. And Blades stepped in with the interception and went 61 yards for the touchdown. That seems like an eternity ago. The Irish will punt at the 4.53 mark. They blocked the punt. Free in the end zone. Bounced on for a touchdown, Miami. Attempt the extra point. Yeah. Got a timeout here in the Orange Bowl, and we'll be right back. If you're waiting to buy a personal computer, you may have questions about power, expandability, and dollars and cents. For the complete answer, take a close look at IBM. An IBM PC runs thousands of programs, expands easily, and prices are better than ever. So don't wait. Once you take the first step, the rest come easy. IBM Personal Computers. Made in the USA. American-made fashion, it matters to me. Made in the USA. Fact is, it really matters to me. Now everything that says American-made style and quality says it proudly. Made in the USA. Ask for the Made in the USA label because it does matter to all of us. You better believe it matters to me. Made in the USA. It is a game for pride and for honor. The 86th Annual Army-Navy Game, next Saturday on CBS Sports. We are back in the Orange Bowl. The score is 57 to 7. One of the worst defeats ever administered to Notre Dame. Yes, yes. The extra point is good. And it is a 51 point difference right now at 444. And of course, what surprises me in this particular situation is that you would humiliate a coach on the other side of the field who is closing out his career and the game is long over. So that I'm as surprised as anyone that they would go for the blocked punt. I know that being number one is important. And certainly that's what you play for. But I was impressed enough with Miami even before that moment. 444 to go on the clock. That's the all-time worst right there, a 59-point thrashy by a great Army team back in 1944. Seedling to kick it off. Miller. And again, Seelig. I have not seen any more aggressive kicker than he is getting downfield. That's the second time this afternoon that Seelig has taken on a return man, beating some of the cover guys downfield. And of course, tomorrow we've got more action for you. 
The NFL today at 12:30 Eastern Time on CBS. Nick Vermeil and Joe Montana, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross will be down in Washington. That's one of our key games. The Rams take on New Orleans, and then of course the doubleheader: the 49ers and the Redskins. Now it is Burline. Dropping the pass complete to Reggie Ward. Back up to the 24, and let's go down on the field to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Brent, just to amplify on what you said, very frustrating down here on the Notre Dame side. A couple of players got into a shoving match. They're throwing their helmets, but a lot of anger now I'm getting from some of the people down here about running the score on the other side. Let's go back upstairs. Remaining is four minutes. Berline. Slam down at the 24. Dan Stubbs, a starter, 96 tackle in there. And it's third down. Third and eight. Sacked at the 20 as Stubbs breaks through again. So it'll be fourth down, and Sorensen will punt, and Perriman is set to return the ball for Miami. And standing on his own five yard line. Gets the punt off. Drive Perriman back to the 27. And he goes out of bounds. We'll be right back in the Orange Bowl, 2.30 remaining. If you're looking for more in family transportation, say goodbye to the big bulky station wagon. Now say hello to the 1986 Toyota Wonder Wagon. It has more room than any other wagon or small van. Gets more miles per gallon than any other full-sized wagon, and no small van has more standard horsepower. You can get two sunroofs, captain's chairs, and an ice maker. The Toyota Wonder Wagon. The Florida Everglades and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating, as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place in old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. Will the 49ers burst Jay Schrader's bubble? Or will they, too, become believers? Get the story on the NFL Today. Well, senior Alan Pinkett closing out a career at Notre Dame. He has certainly done his part. Scored their lone touchdown here this afternoon, too. Toretta handed off, and Miami runs it in the middle of the line and still gained about eight yards that time. J.C. Penny. 21, normally a return man. He was one of the players who sat out a game, too, because he missed a practice session. And so this will be second and two as we wind down toward the two minute mark here in the Orange Bowl. High formation. Toretta handing off, and Penny close to the 40 yard line for a first down. Daryl Gordon, 38, making the stop for the Irish. Ball will be placed down at the 39-yard line. And we're inside of a minute 40.
There's the pitch to Penny. Daylight, 45, 40. And he was out of bounds. This is not a touchdown. A 27 yard gain. And a first down for the Hurricanes. George Streeter, reserve strong safety out of Chicago, pushed him out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Coming down to the 120 mark here. Perriman on the end around trying to cut back. Kiernan. The defensive line got in and brought him down. Now the time running out on the Jerry Faust era. With his arm around the man who has done so much throughout his career at Notre Dame. Second and 16. Penny stopped at the 41 yard line. Kiernan and Bob Martz. The tackle for the Irish. Brett, Notre Dame will rise again. With these ashes will come the winning Notre Dame team. That's my prediction. Over Notre Dame, 58 to 7, and it is also ended for Jerry Faust. <laughs> Jerry Faust leaves the field for the last time. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS. This is the amazing Suzuki Quad Sport. It has more headroom than fine American luxury cars. It is faster on rugged terrain than most exotic Italian sports cars. It displays better handling under treacherous conditions than the high performance sedans of Germany. Only Suzuki gives you the choice of eight different quad runners. The most extensive line of four wheel ATVs off the road today. Suzuki Quad Runners, the foremost in four wheeling. La Deneuve, on La Salle. La magnifique La Salle. La sensationnelle La Salle. La romantique La Salle. La superbe La Salle. La masculine La Salle. La gorgeous La Salle for women like Catherine Deneuve and men like you. Available at William Effer Jewelers, Hamilton Avenue. Sports of all sorts, Sunday night at 11.30. Well, our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game are certainly no surprise. Vinny Testaverde of Miami lit up the skies here this afternoon. 22 of 32, 356 yards and two touchdowns. And for Notre Dame, well, Alan Pinkett, and this is in honor of a great career. Today, he rushed for 77 yards, scored their only touchdown, caught three passes for 39 yards, and a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. And, Era, I think you summed it up a short time ago when you said that Notre Dame would rise again, and I think you fully expect Lou Holtz to feel the winner almost immediately. Well, I think that he's he certainly has the kind of experience that a team needs he's going to have to rebuild this whole program reinstill the confidence of, the, of this team uh, Testaverde was just too much for him this afternoon I thought that maybe Jimmy Johnson might have been able a little bit be a bit more charitable and we will continue here from the Orange Bowl in Miami in just a moment